give you a briefing about the uh, uh, the uh, oh, something has gone wrong. Yeah. You ask us to give you a briefing about the steps which are being taken in the implementation of the uh, uh, recommendations arising from the uh, commission of inquiry into the um, malfeasance at the public investment corporation. Now, <clears throat> the board of directors of the PIC has, uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, um, uh, decided that given the complex nature of the report, they would appoint a, a, a competent person who, who would be assisted by, um, uh, by other people to make sense and what to do about some of the recommendations. And this they've done, and the chairperson will, exp will enlighten us just now about what has actually happened. Um, now, it's a twin track process. Part of it uh, has to do with, uh, 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 Mr. Maswangani, there's something you've done there. I, I don't see myself. Can you, can you see me? Because Mr. Maswangani, Yes, you're still there. You're occupying that space. It's supposed to be me now. Well, what's uh, Alan, what's wrong? Uh, I've uh, muted the video. But you're still Alan, in the center stage. Alan, you're, still, Alan, you're the host. Uh, He's going to do the, minister, yes, no, the, the minister is uh, visible on my screen, at least. Yeah, we can okay. see the minister. I can see oh. him also from my side. Okay, no, it's fine. Um, the it's a twin track process. The first track is with the PIC board of directors, and the second track is with the national treasury. And then both tracks will eventually come together into a cabinet memorandum, which will be submitted early in the year 2021. And after that, obviously actions will then start to be to be taken so i thought i should say that to give a context that a lot of work has been done the matters are very complex and we have no intention of taking shortcuts we want to get to the bottom of this and uh, and deal with the issues and the malfeasance uh, so that going forward uh, we can uh, uh, have a, a, a proper institution uh, which safeguards the interests of one, the pensioners in the public service, two, the uh, funds in the compensation for occupational injuries and diseases, and three, the unemployment uh, insurance fund. And I think the members of parliament are well within their rights uh, to ask us to uh, to our account. And I'm sorry about last week, things have been just too much. As it is, I've been sitting on this chair for almost the whole day, save for going to the to the men's, men's room. I've not even had lunch or dinner, but it's fine. That's my problem. If it's okay, Honorable Maswangani, if I could hand over uh, with your permission uh, to the chair of the board of directors, of the PIC to take us through what they've been doing, if that's okay with you. But that's my introduction. I'll come back later um, to buttress uh, whatever would have been said by the board of directors of the PIC. Uh, thank you, and I submit as such. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, PIC chairperson, Dr. Koz, over to you.
Alan, is Dr. Fazer connected? Yes, he was here. Hey, Bakalabji, Miko. technology. Alan. Hello, uh, Alan. Yesterday, yesterday, Dr. Koza was on um, was a minute or so ago. Uh, if I can just ask Dion from the PIC, um, uh, because I'm not sure if he signed in with his name. Or not. Uh, uh, Dion, Dion, are you there? Dion? Uh, Dion. Hey, I'm here. I'm Alan. Yeah. Um, I'll quickly check with Dr. Koza. Give me a minute, please. Where is the secretary? The company secretary. Uh, we are here. Uh, Minister, we are here. We're just trying to get hold of. Um, um, but if if, if if he's not able to, we can get started. Look, I'll quickly call him. Okay. No? Uh, maybe, um, uh, Mrs. Tola, why, why why don't you start? Because you've got the bulk of the presentation anyway. Just start, yeah. and the, when Uba uh, Bukosa joins us, we can proceed, please. Because we've got time problems. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, Minister. Um, uh, we, 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 we have drafted um, with a, a presentation which we have submitted uh, both to, 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 to the Ministry and um, to the Commission, um, and we're just going to flight it. So I hope that uh, 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 members, uh, honourable members, can can see the the presentation, and of course uh, any other. Uh, people who are avail uh, are present at this briefing. Can you see it, uh, Minister? Yes, we can see it. We can see it. Yes. Actually, I'm address myself to the chairman. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much. Um, if if you would allow me, I, I just want to start um, kind of uh, talking broadly yeah, about yeah. the context uh, in which the the the. the, so, the so, can you hear me now? Hello. It's, it's Hello. Open. Hello. Yeah. Can can you hear me now? Yes, okay. chair. Who, who's that? Yeah, I, I, I it's 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 Ruel Koza, the chairman of the PIC. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, but we are you connected through an iPad? Uh, th through yeah, through an iPad, yes. Yeah, you it doesn't it doesn't have your name, it just say iPad. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 Mr. maybe hand over to the chairperson. We don't want you to lose it. We can, won't can be you hear, on. Can you hear me now. That's why I've stopped my video and my and muted to allow the chair to do the proper introductions. Okay, Dr. But, but, Koza, this is what has happened hear? so far. We can hear you. Can, you can hear me. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would be happy to actually sort of break the eyes and then indicate to you which way we would like to go. But I, I can't see my face, I can't see your face. Dr. Koz, we, we can, I can see I, you. I can see your face now. But I can't see you. Alan, can you assist Dr. Koz with the technology? Can you try to unmute, unmute him? I, I, can, I can see you, Chair, I can see my minister. I am born in Dogodela. <laughs> um, oh, there, there I am. Can you okay. see me now? Hey, I'm a man of a tongue of technology. Ah, it is so in Goma Siku. Ah, this is the new normal. It's, it's for young people. <laughs> okay. So the minister my, has, has given my, any doctor remarks. I, so now yes. we are requesting you to take us through. He said, that uh, uh, PIC uh, is looking at implementation uh, of the recommendations together with National Treasury. Uh, yeah. Subsequent to that, uh, there is going I to be a that will I, go I followed, to I followed all of that, uh, uh, Chairman. Yes. Uh, when I was about to come in, that's when I got cut. So I do have the background of, of what the minister actually outlined. OK. So you so, uh, Chairman, thank you very much. I would like to start with um, the introduction of my colleagues, and I would like uh, for them to actually just, uh, by way of introduction, say who they are and what they do for the PIC, in something like two sentences, starting with the Chief Executive Officer.
Thank you, Chairman. My name is uh, Abel Sitole, and I'm the CEO at the Public Investment Corporation. Thank you, Chair. I I'm responsible for, for the organization, and more, more important in this context, um, uh, for the actual implementation of the Empathy Commission report, and of course, um, with the oversight of the board and the advisory panel. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. I take it uh, Advocate uh, Ndaba is also uh, with us. Advocate yes, Ndaba. I am, I am Chair. Thank you. Um, a, a, a good evening, uh, Chair and uh, the Minister and everyone present. My name is Makubalo Ndaba. I'm a member of the Board of Directors of the Board of the PIC. I chair the Human Resources and Remuneration Committee. I was uh, enjoined by the board of directors to help put together the advisory panel, which we are going to discuss sometime in the evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Advocate. Uh, I take it uh, that Temba Gameza is with us as well. Yes, I'm here. Oh, yeah, please, brief introduction. Thank you, Chair. Um, good evening uh, the, to the Chair and to the Minister and the rest of the, uh, the uh, committee. Uh, my name is Temba Gamedze. I am chair, I'm on the board of the PIC and I chair the Investment Committee. Um, thank you. No, thank you very much, Temba. I take it uh, since Barbara is here. Thank you, Chair. I'm Barbara Watson a member of the board and the chair of the Social Ethics and Transformation Committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I can't see the other faces. I don't know if, um, I mean, feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, I see my deputy, Futi Mtoba, who is also uh, chairing the audit committee. Would you like to very briefly introduce yourself? Uh, you are mute. Uh, would you like to unmute? Uh, oh, okay. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. Good afternoon, um, members. Um, um, my name is Futim Toba. I'm the uh, one members of the board. I'm also the chair of the Audit and Risk um, Committee. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Um, um, let no, me no, no, see. No, 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 no Chair. She's the, she's the chair of the Audit Committee. Because yes. the audit and risk have been divided into two. There's an audit committee. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. I'm the chair of the yes. audit, I'll, I'll audit and the... compliance committee. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good thank evening, Chair. Uh, Tepi Somwatudi. I am member of the board of directors of PIC. I know Chairperson is used to grilling me on other matters, but today I'm on the board side <laughs> and not on the national <laughs> project. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Sepiso. I think you have served a, 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 an invaluable, uh, uh, you've been of invaluable service to the board. Um, who it, else is it, uh, with it, us? It, from it, the board? Might, it might be announced tomorrow that she's now the substantive deputy director general for asset and liabilities, but keep it to yourselves until tomorrow. So, thank, thank you for uh, take us, taking us in your confidence. Of, uh, Minister. Those who are attending, yeah. I, I just wanted to have it on record, uh, those that are attending. Who are the other directors? I can't see all the faces, unfortunately. Oh, the, uh, Dr. Sabelo, the brain. Uh, you are muted, uh, Doc. Unmuted. Sabelo, the brain here, yeah. our honorable chair. Thank you very much. I'm a non-executive director at the EPIC. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Stabello. I, I take it um, perhaps as a sum total of the uh, directors who could make it to this session. And uh, Chairman of SCOF, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Uh, the minister, our line minister, our executive minister has actually gave, given the background. We um, are in alignment with what he has uh, presented. What I would like to say by way of introduction, after which I will hand over to uh, our chief executive officer who will introduce um, uh, one or two or three 
of his um, um, uh, fellow executives who we believe will come in at the appropriate time even as we present. I want to uh, state at the outset that upon um, our being um, uh, invited to the board by the by Honorable Tito Mboweni, we actually got on with the job. We did not uh, wait for the uh, release of the Mpati Commission. And may I add right at the outset that a great deal of what the Mpati Commission uh, later on uh, reported uh, actually overlapped uh, very substantively with the work that we have been doing upon, uh, upon joining the board or upon assuming uh, positions on the board as uh, invited by Honorable Tombo Weni. Uh, it will become clear as we present that in fact uh, a great deal had been covered. Uh, we um, came up with a new model that actually restored a number of uh, the things that were suggested by the Mpati Commission in terms of the structure, uh, the separation as um, the uh, minister indicated, the separation of uh, risk and audit, as well as the separation of investment um, um, and uh, the chief executive positions, which we consider to be uh, crucial. But we also consider a number of things to be crucial, um, our belief, is that any well-run organization stands essentially on two pillars, competence as well as ethical conduct. So the ethical conduct dimension was neglected all period of time, which is in fact why the PIC found, it where it found itself where it is. So we laid a great deal of emphasis on the establishment of um, a committee that will deal with things ethical but not only that, I will see, they also deal with challenge of transformation. Transformation as comprehensively understood. So all of those we actually began to work with. And IT was somewhat weak. We made sure that we, in fact, we actually find ways of strengthening that. So many of the recommendations of the Empathy Commission were getting addressed long before the report was released. But of greater significance, uh, where once the, the report was released, we felt that in order for us to be able to tackle the challenges, given that we are not full-timers as a board, we actually needed to have an advisory panel, which is the practice actually worldwide where the challenges of this nature are concerned. And we proceeded to appoint um, Judge Mohoro to be that person. And she had to be assisted uh, by an, a financial uh, expert as well as a legal uh, expert. And these have since been, been appointed uh, to, that, to those positions. But in the meantime, it behoved us to actually work with the, uh, with the other institutions of government that um, the Empathy Commission also recommended fairly strongly. And uh, we did not waste time uh, before we actually approached the Hawks, uh, who very, very kindly actually gave us uh, um, the time of day very, very early, uh, earlier on. And uh, we have met with them a number of times. They have uh, started working with us pretty uh, closely. We also um, saw it fit as the um, party commission also recommended to work with uh, the NPA. And we have since approached them they have opted for to make common cause with us. So those are the um, uh, key elements of what we have been able to do. But uh, as for where we are with the implementation of um, the uh, party commission, I would like to have uh, advocate um, that I just accentuate some of the aspects that I touched upon um, very, very briefly. And following that, then we'll hand over to the chief executive who will in fact be doing uh, the bulk of the presentation. He will also indicate to us who he has brought from his team. Advocate Makubalo, Nda. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, and once more, good evening to, to the members. Uh, the Chairperson has said a lot 
uh, in terms of what is it that we've done in implementing the, the recommendations of the commission, suffice though is to indicate that the advisory panel has been established to advise the board. The board has not abdicated its responsibility in terms of, uh, in terms of accountability. What a uh, retired judge uh, Mukoro and her team are supposed to be doing is to assist us to come through the report and give us recommendations on some of the pertinent issues. Uh, the report has got 276 recommendations. Uh, out of those 276 recommendations, uh, the executive has uh, demarcated those into 16 themes. And the CEO is going to elaborate on those 16 themes. And out of those 16 themes, there are work streams that have been developed in order to deal with the specific themes. And over and above that, the respective committees of the board have also been enjoined to deal with the matters that, that, that relate specifically to, to the respective committees. For instance, matters that have to do with human resources, which constitute more than 40% of the recommendations of, of, of the party uh, commission, uh, they sit with my committee and there will be those that talk to risk there will be those that talk to audit, and there will be those that talk to general governance, which uh, Dr. Koza, as a, as, a, as a chairperson of the director's committee, has to deal with. Uh, we, the executive of course, has developed a dashboard, um, which gives us <coughs> a, a, a compass in terms of which we are able to track a progress against the implementation. And we are pleased to, to, to announce that uh, out of the dashboard, 69% of the actions uh, have actually either been, uh, been finalized or are in the process of implementation. The CEO is going to, to elaborate further on this dashboard, but what is pleasing to know that, I mean, about two thirds of the recommendations uh, have, have already been uh, um, <clears throat> finalized by, by, by the executives uh, together with the board. Um, what, what is also important uh, for committee members to note is that there are specific issues as the honorable minister did indicate in his opening that have to do with the shareholder, which is national treasury. And those matters uh, sit with, 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 with the shareholder um, and the board will await a guidance from the shareholder as and when the time, as when the time comes. A chairperson, I think the CEO then can elaborate on the on the 16 themes, on the on the dashboard, and on the recommendations as it were. Thank you very much. No, so th thanks a lot, um, uh, Advocate Ndaba. May I uh, now hand over to uh, the Chief Executive Officer, who will uh, lead the charge in terms of uh, the bulk of the presentation. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, good evening to committee members and um, uh, uh, to the Minister and Deputy Minister and, of course, all honourable uh, colleagues who are, are joining us, especially to the board of the PIC. Um, Alan, you, 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 you're going to drive for me, uh, please. Um, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce my team. I'm, 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 in, I'm together with the company secretary, um, Ms. Bongani Ma. Ma <laughs> uh, I have uh, Brian Mavuka, who's our acting chief uh, finance uh, officer. I have uh, the head of internal uh, audit, uh, Mr. Lufuno Nemagobani, and I have acting head of legal, uh, who is um, uh, Lindy Wedlamini. Um, I'm going to 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 be in, uh, the one that's presenting, but they are here to, to answer any questions that may be um, asked at a later stage. Um, without further ado, I think we should um, get started. Um, the, 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 I'm going to run at the beginning quite quickly on the number of slides because in the, in, in the introduction, some of the matters have been covered, so there will be no uh, need for me to repeat um, some of what you uh, has already been presented. So I'm gonna skip that slide, Alan. And that is all. Let me ask. Yeah. Uh, let me ask um, uh, Ubabu Mashangai 
how much time so that we we know how to keep the time. And the how much time, Baba? Uh, until nine. Until nine o'clock. Yeah. Okay. But please let's try and uh, be as brief as brief. possible. <laughs> uh, we, we will be, thank you, Minister, and thank you, Chairperson. Um, so what I want just to paint a, a, a picture of the context in which the, 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 the Mbati uh, Commission was set up. Um, and just to highlight some of the important aspects of how we need to understand what we are doing in, in, the, in the broader context of um, uh, the PIC. So what I've done is to provide an overview of the total assets under management. Um, and I'm gonna focus on the pyramid. Uh, the pyramid in a sense represents the totality of the assets that we manage, uh, which is over 2.1 uh, trillion um, uh, rand. Uh, about 94% of that is all in listed space. And it, it, it is therefore managed under the disciplines that one would find in any other asset manager that manages um, unlisted investments. Uh, and then at the top, you have unlisted property, um, uh, which is quite a significant uh, portion of the uh, portfolio to the extent that we are a landlord um, uh, owning major, um, uh, what we call super regional uh, centers that most people would be aware of, um, uh, both directly and in some instances in, in, in indirectly. Uh, the, the listed part of the property portfolio falls under listed. The, 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 when you look at the terms of, re, of reference of the party commission, um, it's largely on the 3.71%, the, 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 the part that we call the unlisted investments. It is 3.71%, in, in, in proportion to the total portfolio, quite small, but of course, if you look at the actual amount, uh, it, it is over six, 66 billion. So you can say about 70 billion of that is, 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 is actually what is unlisted. Now, although the, 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 the commission was tasked to look at the uh, specific parts of the unlisted environment, it's also important to understand that not all of the unlisted investments of the PIC are necessarily not performing, uh, in actual fact, 45% are performing very well. 22% uh, uh, are performing, but not to the level that we want them to be performing. And only about 32% actually are what we call distressed. Now, even in the distressed, it doesn't mean that all those are necessarily because of what we, we, we term malfeasance. It might just be decisions that were taken at the time and things uh, changed and they didn't really provide the outcome that was expected. So the fact that they are distressed it's not in itself an indication of malfeasance. It, it, some of the malfeasance happened in, in this particular area where we have distressed assets, but not all of them are distressed. Actually, the distressed, we, we know what they are, and, and some of the malfeasance, those are known because they are part of what the commission actually investigated. So they, 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 they formed part of the, of the terms of reference of the commission. The second slide simply shows that for a specific client, and again, you will see that now we talk about one of our biggest clients, and we do have other clients, the UIF and the compensation commissioners, uh, is that the same kind of pattern repeats itself. The bulk of the portfolio is listed, and, and, and although, of course, it, it, it is not perfect, but by and large, it is not the area where the investigation that, that the commission were uh, tasked to investigate actually is, is in. And the same thing, when you look in terms of how that has impacted um, the, 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 the GPF, again, you will see that over 46% of the GPF portfolio is doing very well, very well, or only about 20.3 is underperforming, but still performing. And the balance, of course, is the one that's distressed. So when you look at the, at the portfolio in totality, even in the unlisted space, over 60% of the portfolio that we're managing actually is performing to varying de degrees of satisfaction, but they are doing very, very well. So when we, when we want to understand the impact that the, 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 the malfeasance that was investigated by the commission, um, um, we need to understand in this context to say it, it actually applies only to a very small portion uh, of the portfolio. By saying it's small, I'm not saying it is dispensable or that we are happy to lose any money or to have any money uh, being treated in a manner that's untoward. I'm not saying that, but I just wanted to contextualize that we, 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 we understand that the bulk of the PIC and, and the assets that the PIC manages and the, 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 the processes and the systems that are actually applied in the management are actually 
um, doing what they're supposed to do. And they've continued to do that to the satisfaction by and large of our clients. Uh, so I just wanted to contextualize. Having put that context, uh, Alan, next slide. Now I'm gonna go to dealing with what we actually are doing to address the Empathy Commission report. Uh, Advocate Ndaba to some extent spoke to uh, this framework that I, I, I have set up. It, it gives you the context of how we are actually approaching dealing with the, uh, uh, if you remove duplication as Advocate has indicated, 276 uh, recommendations in total. Um, actually, if you, 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 you consider the duplications, they're actually over 308 uh, recommendations in total. But the way we're dealing with them is that they, they can be dealt with in, in circumstances where they are duplicated and then we, 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 we streamline them to 276. So at the bottom is, is management that in a sense has to do the work that needs to be done. Um, and and, 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 and the, the, the management then actually works with specific committees as Advocate Ndaba has indicated to ensure that matters that are specific to a committee are dealt with through, the, through management to the committee. Uh, and then it goes to the advisory panel who then provides assurance to, to the board and, and the board then of course reports to, to the shareholder and, and in this instance to uh, national treasury uh, represented by the minister who has been tasked by the president to ensure that the recommendations are implemented. So that, that's the process. And as the chairman has also indicated, um, we are not the only parties that have to do the work in terms of the recommendations. There are other, uh, other parties like the NPA, the DPCI, uh, the FSCA. Um, uh, they, 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 in some instances, we have to work together with clients, the GPF, the CF, the UIF, and of course, other regulatory bodies such as uh, ERBA. So there's a whole range of other parties that are involved um, in how we are doing this matter. Next slide, um, Alan. Uh, again, uh, Advocate Ndaba has given, a kind of, and the chairman have given a broad um, uh, uh, outline of the advisory panel. Uh, so I won't dwell on it, save to say two very important things. Uh, as Advocate Ndaba has indicated, it is the advisory panel uh, it, it is not there to absolve the board of its responsibility to ensure that the recommendations and the findings are addressed. They are there to, in a sense, to provide oversight that as management is working and reports to the board, and then of course the board reports to, to the ministry, that, that that reporting can actually be, uh, in a sense, certified to have been um, uh, sufficient or satisfactory in addressing the matters that have been raised uh, by the commission. So their role is to advise um, the board not to, uh, in a sense, supplant or to take over the, the, the responsibility of the board. The, the, the implementation remains the responsibility of the board who, of course, um, are doing so uh, through management in instances where management can act uh, in, 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 and itself is not conflicted because there are some areas where management cannot act because it is conflicted either because of individuals um, that are involved or have been cited in the, in, the, in the report or action that needs to be taken that will involve management. And that's where the panel will assist the board to ensure that whatever action is appropriate to the recommendation that have been provided. So that's the first one. The second one is, is to, 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 to be clear that the, the advisory panel is not another commission. Um, it, it, it is purely there to assist the board in the implementation of the recommendations as they currently stand in the commission's report. And sometimes we, we get questions that seem to understand the panel to be another commission, which it is not. It is purely an advisory committee. The board. Next slide, Alan. Now, what, what um, Advocate Ndaba has, has spoken about is, is, is uh, this 16 theme. So we've gone to the report and we looked at the report without interpretation whatsoever. We, we looked at the recommendations verbatim and we will always be addressing the recommendations verbatim. Um, so when we categorize uh, the, the, the recommendations into different themes, we did not change the, the, the in any way the recommendations. We took them as is and then just simply categorized to ensure that we can create a plan that actually helps us to uh, address all the issues in a systemic way, uh, ensure that as management, we have appropriate structures that we can actually report to until such time that it goes to the minister and the minister, of course, will then have to report 
to the owner of the report, who is the president. And in that process, in a sense, should be able to stand scrutiny. So what you see there are the different themes. Uh, the, 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 the big themes, of course, you, you, you would notice, um, maybe the colors are not so clear, so I, I, I will speak to them a little bit more so you, you, you can associate the colors with the actual um, percentages of, of, of the different themes. Uh, the largest one is uh, are two of them, 23%, uh, uh, the, 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 the reddish or amber one, um, the 23% 20, the there, these are further investigations that must be conducted. Now, this is the one area where uh, we haven't made a lot of progress other than the investigations that have been done, either involving our own staff or where there were already uh, work that the PIC was doing to deal with certain matters. For instance, I'll come towards the end, talk to specific cases like IO, uh, where investigations uh, and action is being taken to try and, and address the issues that were identified by the PIC itself and of course also confirmed by the commission in terms of uh, what has transpired and what needs to be done and, and action has been taken. So there's a number of those. The second item is, is, is the review of, of, of policies uh, and procedures. And this is an area where the board had long started and, and it's one of the areas where significant progress is made, where a lot of the, 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 the policies have already been um, uh, reviewed or structures reviewed as the chairman has indicated, for instance, at the executive level um, or processes in, in terms of how the, the, the PIC operates has been done. So this is probably one area where we we'll talk about 23%, but in, in, in excess of 90% uh, of that 23%, I think that they've already been addressed um, by and large. The next uh, second, uh, or the third biggest item is, is, the, is the black one, 15%. Uh, those are processes reviews. Again, this is an area where significant process because these are things that the PIC itself can do uh, with the oversight of the structures within the PIC in the first instance being uh, bodies like internal audit, uh, compliance, risk, uh, and then of course going to the appropriate committees then to the board. So, so the, the, these have largely been also been completed. Uh, and then of course there are um, uh, some other areas uh, where I, 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 I won't dwell on, but all, all I wanted to give you is a flavor of, we have these themes and, and, and a lot of work has, has already been done. I'm gonna now go into the detail uh, of what, um, where we are in terms of the overall picture. Next slide, um, Alan. So what we've done is that we, we, we created a template as the chairman has indicated. The template basically, um, allows us to track every single one of those 308 recommendations. Uh, if you do not uh, count the duplications, if you count the duplications 276, we can trace, check every single one of those to see uh, where we are. And we use a dashboard as, as you saw that it works in three colors. Red means we have not started uh, any work on, 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 on that particular recommendation. Uh, amber or yellow, uh, indicates that we've done significant work. And of course, when you go to the actual template itself, it will give you a sense of uh, how far we've actually progressed. It's, 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 it doesn't uh, seem to show. Uh, sorry, it might be my eyes. Where is the red? I don't see any red here. No, it's a previous slide. I'm talking. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. So sure. at the top, you see red. No, I'm on not, the slide. Not to one that says not okay. implemented risk acceptance none is in red, but I don't yeah, see the red there. No, no, that's, so, so go back to the, to, 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 to the, the slide be, before that, Alan. No, it's not okay. the one. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, we, 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 we will come back to it later. Uh, so, okay. so Minister, what we've done is we, 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 we use a, 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 a three color um, uh, chart. Uh, red signifies Matters not uh, addressed or started. Uh, Amber signifies we've started with the meta, and then you can actually in, go into the template, which will then tell you how far we are with the meta. And green signifies that we've actually done a meta. Now, once we've done that, we will then have to submit it to the uh, advisory panel to, 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 to then, uh, in a sense, uh, give us the go ahead to, to say we finalize that meta, we can move forward. Uh, the dashboard, which is the next one, uh, I, I, I included that just to give us flavor. The next one, Alan, the next slide, yeah, that one, is to give a, a, a broad uh, sense of where we are 
in the totality of um, the recommendations in terms of addressing them. Uh, so what you will see is that 52% are, are, are partially implemented, which means there might be some outstanding matter that we're still having to address uh, by and large. Uh, and then uh, of, 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 of the other 16.36, we actually have implemented and completed. Uh, and there's about 31 uh, 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 percent or 32 percent that we still haven't started, and those largely are the ones that advocate and adv advocate and ever spoke to. It's is where the recommendations involve uh, staff or um, uh, part of people who are involved in the in, in the in, in 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 the PIC itself. And then we waited for the uh, advisory panel to be fully constituted so they can start to have oversight on this one because, in a sense could be said to be conflicted. So we do need to have an independent oversight in what we are doing. Next slide, Alan. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna quickly just give you a flavor of um, how we are actually dealing with the matters um, uh, uh, so that you can see that, although I'm giving the numbers, but how does that translate to the work that we're doing? So I'll start with the actions taken to strengthen governance. Um, of course, the, 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 as the chair has indicated, we, we, we were, uh, thanks to you, Minister, um, uh, appointed a new board uh, that came and, and started to deal with the matters long before uh, the commission finalized. The board, of course, uh, started to reconfigure committees and you correctly uh, highlighted that the risk committee was, uh, um, uh, separated from the audit committee, but it's not the only one. Um, but our committees has been set up to ensure that there is specific focus on the matters that, that were identified by the party commission. Uh, of note, as the chair uh, man has indicated, was the establishment of the social and ethics committee, uh, and that was also enjoined with looking at matters of transformation uh, in the in, in the broader sense. Um, so that again is a new committee. Uh, I already indicated the risk and audit committee were split. Uh, to ensure there's better governance and, 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 and an, uh, an appropriate focus on the matters that were identified in the party commission and also recommended by the party commission. Ethics, I think that's, that's that we've already uh, spoken about the establish, establishment of the office. Um, uh, as of yesterday, the head of ethics started at the, at, at the PIC, so not only we established the, 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 the committee, but there is a a, a senior person at the PIC tasked with uh, inculcating, um, uh, uh, of course, it's the responsibility of the board and management to do so, but their task will be to inculcate and ensure that there's compliance from an ethical point of view, both at the corporate level, which is um, the functioning of the, of, of the PIC itself, but also in the way that we actually engage with investors uh, and with our service providers. And then on policies, the, 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 the chair emphasized the policies were, and, and, and structures were, in, in a sense, almost reviewed long before the, 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 the commission finalized its report. And then, of course, there is a strong alignment between the work that the, the board has done and the recommendations of um, the, the empathic commission. Next slide. And then there are actions. Uh, to, 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 to deal with uh, other matters that not only required the, 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 P, the PIC itself, uh, required uh, the shareholder to get involved. Um, for instance, the review of the memorandum of, in, uh, of incorporation. Uh, and then of course, to look at the, 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 the changes to the operating model of the PIC. Uh, the major structural weaknesses caused by uh, the, the over-concentration of power, I think has been addressed both by uh, creating, um, well, not creating, but re reinstating the, 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 the role of a, of, of a separate uh, CIO to ensure that there is appropriate segregation of, of, of duties between the CEO and the CIO, uh, and as, as well as uh, reinstating the role of the chief operating officer, and then the introduction of the chief, chief um, uh, uh, risk officer and the chief technology officer. Um, the, the chief finance officer, of course, has always been there. Now, those are quite significant because they actually strengthen the process of governance within uh, the PIC. Uh, we have, of course, um, uh, shared with the public that the chief uh, uh, operating officer and the chief uh, risk officer have already been appointed. Uh, the process to appoint the chief technology officer is, 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 in, is nearing its final stages. Um, we're hoping that before the end of this calendar year, uh, we probably would have identified the candidate. 
um, we have appointed a, an acting chief investment officer uh, to ensure that that segregation starts even before a permanent appointment is made. Uh, and we are actually making progress as well in terms of the recruitment of the chief uh, in, um, investment officer, which is slightly of a, a difficult role to fill than the other. So it's, it's taking a little, a little bit longer than what we would have liked, but uh, work is, is, is proceeding uh, in that regard as well. Uh, a work for investment decisions related to or uh, the directly uh, um, uh, 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 individuals and entities that were cited by in, in party commission, I think that that's where there's still a lot of work to be done and that will be done uh, with the assistance of the panel because either some of those people are board members or, or previous, not, not current board members, definitely, but previous board members or members of staff. Um, some of them, of course, have left the employ of, of the PIC, but there are some uh, employees that are still within the organization. And this is where it is important that uh, an entity that is, in a sense, independent of the PIC must have oversight of how we actually deal with those matters involving um, the issues around the investigation of individuals. Next slide, Alan. Uh, the delegation of authority. So the review of uh, the executive structure um, uh, speaks quite a lot uh, to, to, to the need to ensure that we devolve our decision-making and, 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 and power within the organization to other structures other than those that sit in the, the executive wing and, and, and the, 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 the restructuring of the executive has achieved that. Um, and that has triggered the need to, to, to review the delegation of authority. Um, but the delegation of authority, of course, goes beyond just the, the issue around um, the executive. It also speaks to making sure that appropriate decision-making are, are allowed to, 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 to happen at the different levels of the organization, especially where investment is concerned. So that, uh, again, is, 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 is a, a, quite a significant amount of work has been done, but we still continue to, to, to work to ensure that the delegation of, of authority has the appropriate checks and balances. Info, information technology, uh, again, a very strong recommendation that came out of the party commission um, was, 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 was the fact that uh, most of the work that was done, again, I need to emphasize, especially in the unlisted space, because in the listed environment, uh, we use technologies that are, are, are best class. We use uh, systems that are used by asset managers, both uh, domestically and internationally. So there, there are no real major significant issues in terms of our use of technology. The area that was found wanting was again, the unlisted environment where there were no real systems. I, 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 can, I, I can share that uh, we've made significant progress. We've actually um, appointed um, a, 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 a global best um, provider in this area, and we are in the process of implementation uh, to ensure that we can actually manage our unlisted environment uh, in the same way that we do our listed. Um, and of course, the other initiative that the uh, Information and Technology and Governance Committee, um, which is one of the first committees to start implementing the, the recommendations, uh, have been involved with uh, issues that are recommended, for instance, um, working on the whole issue around um, uh, digital transformation, and that we really are working on uh, and pushing very hard to ensure we are in, uh, enabled just like any other uh, uh, asset manager of our stature would be. The uh, item that we were enjoined to focus on both internally with our people is communication. Um, this we, are, we, we, we already have uh, focused on and continue to focus on because you can never over communicate but processes and structures um, have been set up to, to make sure that we engage with our people on regular uh, basis on pertinent matters to them, uh, emanating either from the, the work and the decisions of the executive, um, which are informed by the work of committees and the board. Uh, of course, some of that, of course, being uh, the work that we do through our plan uh, scorecards and, and, and shareholders compact with our shareholder. Um, so that we, we've done internally, we have worked very hard to work to rebuild our relationship with our clients, uh, the, the, the major ones being, of course, the GPF, the UIF, and the compensation commissioners. Um, we started regular meetings on a quarterly basis to ensure that we can deal with matters um, uh, um, uh, in, 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 in a predetermined manner. But, but of course, that does not preclude the uh, normal engagements that are not scheduled. They happen as and when. Uh, there's a need to actually have those in, in engagements. We've gone beyond that to identify key stakeholders. 
uh, amongst which are regulators, but they go beyond that uh, to ensure that we actually uh, have a very structured way of ensuring that we are uh, aligned with our uh, clients. Well, first, in the first instance, our people, our staff, uh, and then our clients, and then of course, uh, our, 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 our governing structures being the committees and the board and the shareholder uh, together with other key stakeholders. Next slide, Alan. Uh, human resources, this is one area that um, um, uh, as Advocate Endeavor has done about 40% about of, of the recommendations in one or the other probably speak to, to this area. Although it may actually apply to other committees, but in most instances it's, it has to do with how we manage our people. Um, and, and this is again, even long before I came, the previous uh, acting CEO had really started the, uh, a robust process to ensure that we, 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 we engage with our people, we, we, we communicate uh, decisions and processes. Um, and when I arrived, uh, started, uh, although, although we have COVID, I, I managed through two months to actually speak to pretty much every employee of the organization, not just speak, but to engage them on uh, the challenges as they see them, how they believe we can address them, uh, and to say, actually, what are we trying to create and how do we go about creating the, the PIC that we want? Um, so, 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 so that process is underway, and if that's really uh, geared towards uh, changing the culture, to, to have a culture that is focused on serving uh, the needs of our clients, the needs of our, our shareholder, and doing so, as the person has indicated, in both an ethical and in a competent manner. Um, so that we're busy with. Um, in, 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 at the same time, we have signed a, a recognition uh, agreement with um, uh, uh, NUPSO, the, uh, the union, uh, which represents quite a significant portion of our employees at, at, at the GPF. Uh, this happened in February 2020. Uh, it's a new environment for us. Uh, we're learning how to manage, but uh, I think we will find each other in time. Uh, of course, it does not preclude that uh, you will see us uh, in pickets uh, on television from time to time, but I think that's the nature of the relationship uh, and we will manage it the best that we can. The, the important uh, uh, business of the, of the PIC is investment and investment management. And this was an area that came under uh, some scrutiny and, uh, from the uh, commission. And it, it, it is an area that the new board started addressing even before the report was issued to try and tighten uh, the investment processes to, to, to establish appropriate uh, reporting lines and the proper accountability to ensure that decisions that are made um, are made for the benefit of clients. Um, for instance, one of the first things that was done was to ensure that um, um, the way we accept proposals from whoever wants to, to be considered for possible funding and investment uh, in a sense um, nobody gets a preference. So whether somebody tries to speak to me or goes to the chair, to the chairman or to any uh, uh, executive in the PAC or board member, the reality is now we have a process that basically uh, treats people as and when they come. So you, 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 when you come, no matter who, who you come through, you get put in the same pool, you, you queue depending on when you came in and you are considered in, in that sense, which that takes care of some of the kind of challenges that people identify to, that said that to, to get any consideration from the PRC, you needed to know somebody. Uh, that process, that no longer stands. Who you know isn't gonna help you uh, because you can't jump the queue. You, 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 you have to queue like everybody else and be considered in your turn. Um, so, so that's been quite significant. And of course, the strengthening of how management reports to the structures uh, and making sure the structures are appropriately um, uh, 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 designed, have the appropriate people involved in, the, in, in them, for instance, ensuring that, for instance, the chief executive is not involved in all the processes uh, where decisions are, making, uh, are, be, are being made by management and committees and the board in the final analysis, uh, which was also strengthened when the, 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 the role of the yeah, yeah. chief investment officer was um, reinstated. Uh, of course, uh, some of it requires us to, to, to engender a new culture and, and, and a lot of training, uh, workshops, and, and, and engagement with our people uh, is, 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 is the order of the day, um, of course, starting with ourselves as, 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 as management. Next slide. Uh, Chief, draw towards a close. I'm done. 
I'm almost done. So I'm going to touch on a, couple, on, on a couple of matters that may be of interest to, 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 to committee members uh, that were um, part of the brief of the commission. Uh, IO, um, IO it has a number of uh, components, but I think just to, to say lastly, there is currently uh, legal action that has been undertaken um, with IO. With IO. Uh, with IO. Um, IO, uh, IO. IO technology it's, it's, it's an investment that the commission looked at uh, which involves um, uh, a, a technology company where we bought close to 90 percent of, of that company and when the commission looked at the investment they identified um, certain areas where process was not followed um, and they, they actually um, required that specific action be taken against the entity itself, but uh, again, uh, against people who were involved in the decision-making process, which was not in, aligned to the policies of um, uh, the, the organization of the PIC. Next slide. And another matter, of course, is uh, SA Home Loan. Uh, there, um, uh, there, 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 there was an in internal investigation long before the commission reported uh, which was instituted in 2018, which uh, uh, found breaches, um, which were raised ultimately by the commission as well. Uh, and, and we are dealing internally with managing uh, some of the challenges that were identified internally by the, the investigation that was conducted and subsequently also highlighted by the commission. Uh, again, there's also a, a court action that's being taken in this regard um, uh, that involves uh, 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 the, the, the matter that in, the, the, the fee that supposedly should have been paid to a specific uh, entity uh, we was not actually paid. So the, 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 there was no money that was paid in this regard. But there is currently a claim on, on, on this fee, um, which we're having to defend in, 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 in court. Um, that I think is, is what I want to speak about in terms of SA Home Loan. Uh, the next one, which probably is the last. Uh, uh, so, so the CEO, let me explain this to the members of the committee. What happened here, <clears throat> as you'd have seen in the report, is that um, SA Home Loans, which was supposed to provide uh, a financing mechanism for, in, in particular, public civil servants housing, uh, <clears throat> then was created between the PIC and a private bank. I think I can mention it here, uh, that it's a private bank. And then <clears throat> for some strange reason, um, the, 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 somebody from the PIC then said to the bank, uh, we should find a black, a, a, a BE partner. And then the BE partner would then become part of this thing so that the 50% that was belonging to the PIC will be split with a, <clears throat> a, a B partner. So that then Standard Bank, oh, oh dear, the bank will then uh, hold the 50% uh, of, the, of the business. The PIC will split their 50% with this black partner. Very strange thing then happened. Unbelievable thing uh, is that the PIC person then says to the bank, I need a finder's fee because I found you a black partner. And then some amount of some uh, 45 million rand or something like that. So this bank says, no, 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 hang on. This is something funny going on. But anyway, we'll think about it. As the bank is thinking about it, the, 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 the one who was found with this Moponya fellow, then discovers that there's a finder's fee. He says, no, but I'm the one who has been found. I need the money. You should pay me for finding me. That's where this main court case is taking place. This is unbelievable stuff. It's like the stuff of the movies, you know? Anyway, please proceed before I get myself into trouble. Uh, thank, th 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 thank you, Minister. I think th what the Minister has, has outlined is pretty much what happened. But I need to emphasize two things. The first one is that the money was not paid. I think Standard Bank was vigilant enough not to, to, to in a sense, alert, alert the organization, which then 
did not act on the on 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 on, on, on this request. So the, the 45 million was never paid. So so and, and that's that's part of the litigation. So what, what I want to indicate though is that on, on, on most of these matters, are your South African home loans? Uh, I'm going to talk to VBS right now and to Steinhoff later. All, all these, most of these matters are subjudicated because the PIC is actually involved in, in court action against uh, this entity. So uh, my, 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 my presentation is brief, not because I'm trying not to, to, to be open about uh, what we're dealing with, but I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that we, we are actually in court as we speak. So. I, I'm just highlighting what we're dealing with without going into detail because otherwise I might just be compromising our position and how we actually dealing with the matters. Uh, next slide. Uh, it's VBS, uh, both on SA Home Loan and on uh, VBS, uh, action is being taken, of course, against our own staff members who either have been, sh been uh, shown to have acted um, um, uh, uh, wrongly. Uh, uh, in the case of BBS, uh, two employees have already left the organization. I'm being kind when I say left. Uh, they, were, they, were, they, they, they were ushered out of the PIC uh, and we're taking uh, legal action against them. Uh, as well as the SA Home Loan, there, there are uh, action that's being taken against some of the individuals that um, are alleged to have um, uh, either been in the process of assisting some of the wrongdoing that was uh, highlighted by the minister. Uh, BBS, of course, is, is a matter that's in the national um, interest because it involves uh, some of the most vulnerable people uh, uh, of, of our people. Um, again, these are matters that are before the court. Other than to say that we have taken action against our people, uh, there are uh, a whole range of uh, actions that have been taken by ourselves, by the NPA, by the DPCI, uh, in terms of investigating and wanting to bring, bring to book uh, uh, the people who are involved uh, in this process from the PIC perspective. Of course, not all of this involves the PIC. There are other matters that are outside of the PIC, but those that we are involved with, uh, we are dealing with those matters. Uh, next one should be uh, Stano. No? Second uh, Jalo. Okay, so, so, so this one is the, is, 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 is um, the, the most specific one, of course, is, is the, is the um, our, 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 the PIC's investment in uh, independent media South Africa, uh, where there's been, uh, in the first instance, default, uh, and we're taking action uh, because of the default, not because of any other reason other, other than the fact that there was a default, and like any other investor that uh, we, we support, either by uh, investing in the equity or uh, providing loans, if, if, if the conditions are not met, to the extent that we, we have recourse, we do take that recourse and we do not necessarily look at the identity of who we're taking recourse against. It's more about whether you're meeting the conditions or not. Uh, now, this the issue here, what the commission found was that um, from internally at, 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 at the PIC, there might have been, of course, the investment itself hasn't performed, but the issue here is that um, there was almost like a substitution of one investment for another which did not materialize and commitments were made and therefore certainly we need to take investigation to ensure that uh, we can deal with the action that was thus taken that were not um, uh, warranted and untoward. Um, and then of course uh, 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 unfortunately as it happens uh, Sekun Jalo is also uh, a parent uh, in, uh, company to Ayo so there, there might be the sense that you're targeting IO, but it is not. It so happens that it's investments that have been found to, to have issues that we need to address and happen to be in the same stable. Uh, next matter uh, is time. Again, the matter that's um, uh, uh, before the courts, uh, and, 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 and not just before the courts, but before the courts in, in, in multiple jurisdictions. Uh, and we, we some of that action that we're taking does involve us um, participating in, in, in other jurisdictions, but by and large, we're focusing on our own jurisdiction. Um, there, there are a number of issues. Of course, there is the, the major uh, claim uh, to try to find out what went wrong and to hold people accountable who might have contributed to uh, this investment, um, uh, in a sense, uh, 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 facing the challenges that it has faced, which from a client uh, client perspective and from an asset manager perspective, we saw a significant um, devaluation of the assets that we hold. Um, and, 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 and in that regard, we are pursuing our rights um, 
both as a uh, shareholder with other shareholders. Uh, we're also engaging with uh, Steinhoff where they're trying to find other ways to deal with the matter, where they're trying to have other conversations to say, are there possible settlements? But whatever conversation we, we are having, uh, they're not designed to absolve anybody of any wrongdoing. And to, 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 to pursue it on that, we, have, uh, we are pursuing um, uh, uh, legal action to have sight of uh, the report that was uh, commissioned by Stanhoff um, to be completed by PwC, which they're not uh, willing to share. And we would want to see that because, well, we, we can't predict what's in it, but we hope that it might give us guidance in terms of the kind of direction we need to be taking to strengthen our case uh, in the different uh, legal uh, actions that we're taking to try to recoup as much as we can um, on behalf of our clients. Next slide, I think it's probably... Uh, and that is totally, no, that is totally, just go back to that, Steinhoff. Eh? Yeah, Steinhoff. <laughs> you see, with, with Steinhoff... Back. Go back, one slide back. Oh, yeah, oh, there you are. No, Thanks, that, no, that, you fine. You, you see, I, I want the uh, honorable members to understand with Steinhoff, it's actually not Steinhoff directly, but indirectly. It's Steinhoff to the extent that we provided as PIC funding to a party that then invested in Steinhoff of, of a large amount of money, which is there in the report. And therefore, we are pursuing, I, I hope, we are pursuing the party that received the loan from us and the loan that was then invested in Steinhoff. So in a sense, the two parties become joint, but our primary party that we're dealing with is the one who came for the, I think, 10 billion rand loan from us. And the circumstances under which a loan of that amount was given is very uh, suspect and suspicious. And I think that's what you're pursuing there. So Steinhoff is joined, but our primary thing is this one who came to us for the, for the loan. I thought members should understand that. And uh, so, but they're joined, they're in the same WhatsApp group, yeah. Thanks. Please proceed uh, towards the conclusion. Uh, uh, just just to, to, to augment what the, the, the minister has, has indicated, uh, there was also uh, a significant depreciation in the asset itself, um, which is why we're also pursuing the larger standoff because if there was room doing that then led to us having this significant reduction in value to the extent that somebody must be held accountable for that, we, we are pursuing that as well. Um, I also need to just to, to, to indicate that um, the, 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 the loans that we, that we provided are still are currently still under some kind of a protection. So the value is still protected, but it still will also be determined by the outcome of how we engage with Steinhoff. Um, going forward. The last part of the presentation speaks to uh, further investigations and disciplinaries. Um, there are other investigations and disciplinaries that are being uh, handled, of course, by the advisory panel for reasons that uh, we, we, we want to make sure that where um, management is, is involved, that in a sense, they don't, have, they don't act in a conflicted manner, or if, if they have to act, at least there is another oversight body that ensures that they're doing the right thing. And that's where here the, the, the role of the advisory committee becomes very, very important. Of course, it also involves the, the engagement with other uh, uh, agencies and bodies, as the chairman has indicated, the NPA who already are on board, the DPCI, they're already on board, and actually already have done a lot of work in terms of investigations, um, uh, both internally and externally to deal with some of the matters that we're dealing with, such as BBS and IO. Uh, so that work is, 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 is actually quite advanced as we speak. But of course, it is only one side of the story. These matters might end up in court and people will have to defend themselves. So you can't really put a sense of how long it's going to take because um, those investigations still have to follow the normal uh, legal processes that uh, the country affords to everybody. I think that is my last slide. The rest is simply um, uh, just to give you a as a, 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 a dictionary of all the ways that I've used that might not make sense when you read the report later. Thank you very much, Chairman. That, that is broadly um, where we are at in terms of the implementation of the report. 
the dashboard itself and the template itself, as I've indicated, actually contains every single one of the recommendations. I've just given a broad overview, but the dashboard itself um, gives a, a, a detailed information. Um, and, and, and currently we have an arrangement with National Treasury where we need to report on progress as well on a quarterly basis to ensure that um, the minister who's enjoined with the implementation can get a sight of it. But of course, the quarterly is purely to ensure that we have a regular, they have access to the dashboard and to the template at any given time um, if they need to get a sense of where we are with any matter. Thank you very much, Chairman, and thank you, Minister, and thank you, uh, Chairman of the PAC Board. Yeah, before, before the Chair of the uh, PAC Board of Directors, uh, say something and then hand over to the chair of the committee. Uh, since we are submitting this uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, this report before politicians in parliament, I need to indicate that when you read through the report, you see the um, interconnectedness of political influence in wrongdoing. Uh, it's, it's all over the place. It's, 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 it's all over the place. And one of the lessons learned uh, is that there has to be a code of conduct for public representatives and politicians about the fact that if you want to start a business, please go to a private uh, business. Don't come to the public investment corporation, because this is it's a public uh, servants uh, uh, savings for the future. So if you go through the report, you'll see all these malfeasance uh, involving public representatives and politicians. So that's one of the things that in, in future we're to focus on and make recommendations about why publicly exposed people must stay away from public institutions. Um, but I, I hand over to the chair of the board and then uh, he's going to hand over to the chair of the committee. Thank you very much. You need to unmute. Um, uh, uh, Chairman, un Chairman, un un Chairman un unmute. Chairman, un unmute yourself. I guess you can hear me now. Yes, Chair, we can hear you. No, thank you very much. Um, Minister, uh, thanks a lot for uh, guiding us uh, through uh, the processes that uh, we had to go through in reporting uh, to SCOF. Uh, our sense is that uh, we have gone a long way uh, as the PIC in uh, implementing the uh, recommendations of the Party Commission and we have gone about it uh, systematically. And we have also involved the uh, institutions that we believe need to be uh, involved in making common cause with us to make sure that we are thorough in implementing the recommendations of the Mpati Commission. And having presented as such, we would uh, like to um, then move on to answering uh, questions where questions might um, uh, be called for, uh, where the seeking clarification might be uh, called for. We want to believe uh, that um, uh, going forward, we are very, very well positioned to deliver on that which um, we are expected to, to deliver. And at this stage, I would like to just, just point out that uh, given um, the uh, label that was given under uh, uh, Abel Sitole, uh, Brian Mavuka. Brian Mavuka was not presenting to the chief executive officer who was uh, presenting, and his name is Abel Sitole. So Chairman of Scoff, uh, we are uh, ready to uh, engage in discussion and answering questions that uh, SCOF might in fact um, have to pose to us. Over to you, Chairman of SCOF. Okay. 
Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairperson, CEO, and other board members for the presentation. Uh, members of the committee, uh, if you'd like to ask clarity, seeking questions or make uh, comments, this is the right time to do so. Can members indicate by raising hands uh, in the platform here? Uh, Alan, you will assist me in identifying members who would like to make comments and ask clarity seeking questions. For now, I see Honorable uh, Rolong Akbare Vessels, Marvila uh, Etzam, uh, Alf Liz, uh, Skosana, Uh, Shibambu, okay. Uh, Alan, I have got Honorable Murolong, Honorable Vessels, Mavila Eta, Liz, Skosana, Shibambu. Is there any other member that I have noted here? Uh, no, Chair, that's uh, all that I have on my side as well. Okay. Uh, Honorable Murolong. Uh, over to you. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, let me thank the Minister, the Deputy Minister, the Chairperson of the PIC Board, and all uh, CEO and all uh, members uh, who are uh, joining us today on this platform. Um, let me start with a disclaimer that I've been traveling. So it's possible that some of the questions which I uh, would be posing, uh, deriving them from some uh, detailed uh, uh, verbal report. Uh, so uh, I would hope that if such questions have been answered, I would then be later clarified that they've been adequately dealt with. Um, in the past, uh, we saw that uh, the CFO of uh, PIC was on suspension. And if I'm not correct, the suspension was uh, extended sometime uh, this year. Uh, so I wanted to check whether there is, uh, are we not uh, encouraging instability uh, by operating without a, a permanent uh, CFO uh, of the uh, PIC? Uh, Chairperson, uh, you know, there is a, a perception out there, and, and I seem to be inclined to agree with that perception uh, that we have not been as vociferous, uh, if you like, uh, with respect to uh, the uh, challenges that uh, are a consequence of our investment into uh, Steinhoff. In fact, uh, to take this matter further, uh, there are now emerging allegations which are quite new, which are yet to be validated. Uh, that uh, uh, Steinhoff is uh, moving uh, its money out of the country. Um, have we been able to uh, validate these allegations? Um, are we not uh, uh, somewhat perturbed uh, by the potential loss of our investment? Uh, is there a plan to pursue uh, the directors in their personal capacity for uh, the losses incurred? Um, uh, with respect to all other investment, uh, shouldn't the PIC start projecting the losses that will be incurred from all of these investment and provide insight to this committee on all uh, uh, projected uh, losses? Uh, the, the last question, uh, Chairperson, is what does the latest ground downgrade by the rating agency mean for uh, the PIC? Does the PIC maintain an appetite for purchasing government bonds. Thank you very much. Uh, shall, shall we deal with uh, each, qu each, uh, each question uh, at a time? I believe perhaps that might actually be more appropriate because uh, uh, the people raising the questions don't um, confine themselves to one question. It's a cluster of questions. And uh, my... Oh, Chairperson. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is my meeting. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, uh, we are not in the I, PIC uh, board meeting. Yeah, I've been bitten by the chairman bug. I do apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. What you should do, uh, uh, note all the questions. We allow all members to make comments and ask questions. Then Thank you will come after all of them. So you don't respond to a question, questions after each member. So now Thank it's uh, Akbar Vessels. Over to you. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, <clears throat> Chairperson, yes, and thank you to uh, all the participants and uh, the minister and uh, the presentation and the briefing. I think, uh, Chairperson, it is common cause that uh, this engagement and the briefing is long overdue. Um, and uh, yeah, it's at a, at a difficult time of the year we're all tired um especially in this week of um thorough presentation um with a lot of information that was uh, that was presented to us and uh chairperson to to start with I, I do want to propose um taking that into consideration and the fact that uh we in the past have not had a lot of engagements um, in a normal calendar year or in a normal parliamentary session with the PIC, that we do resolve to, uh, in the new year, have more frequent engagements with the PIC and um, that we engage with them um, more often. That being said, Chairperson, uh, just a few uh, questions and remarks. <clears throat> I think the one issue is obviously taking into account the underperforming and distressed um, investments on the one hand, which is of concern, um, and then being cognizant of the fact that the Mbati Commission did not investigate all investments. Um, they, they only did a, a partial investigation of certain um, investments because of time constraints, obviously. So the question is, how far is, and, and I, I know there was, uh, there was referred to further investigations, but the question is, um, how far are these investigations, uh, further investigations into more of the invest investments that were not investigated by the, the um, party commission? commission um, how far is that process? Is there any timeline with regards to that? On the other hand, in, is the investment expenses, um, which was found um, by the party um, commission that there should be a detailed investigation, starting with uh, expenses as far back, um, fees ex as far back as 2014, um, all the fees that were um, paid with regards to inv investments um, for investments um, that were exceeding um, 5 million rand, that that should be investigated because it was also found that, uh, that the, um, the fees were definitely not in line with the growth of the investments that it was for. And uh, I also then want to ask how far that is. Is there any plan with regards to a detailed investigation in terms of the uh, expenses, the investment expenses? Um, and uh, yeah, then um, also, um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, one of the uh, recommendations was also that there should be recovery of these fees where it where it is found that uh, it was wrongfully paid or that that it was irregular, that there should be recovery, um, and how far we uh, in that regard of of planning to apply that that recommendation. Then, Chairperson, the investment mandate agreement, um, it was referred to, um, but what, what bothers me, and maybe there can just be clarity on why the investment mandate agreement is so secret um, that members of the pension fund do not have um, the uh, privilege to, to be able to access such agreement 
and to see what that mandate, uh, what well, that investment mandate agreement is. Um, what is the reason for that secrecy behind it? But why it is of concern is the commission also found that that mandate is very loose, which is of concern. And then it is, um, it's quite an urgent matter to um, revisit or to review that, uh, that mandate because currently that's, that's ongoing. And if it is uh, problematic as it was found to be, that should be prioritized to review um, the mandate. So uh, the question there is, I saw that that is on the list, but how far is that really implemented? Because that should, in my view, be priority. Um, Chairperson, yes. And then just lastly, obviously consequences for all these uh, transgression, um, transgressions and uh, investments that, uh, that, that are um, distressed and were made painfully. Um, I, I didn't hear a lot about... Uh, how the consequences of disciplinary action will be implemented uh, if, if there can just be more uh, elaboration on that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Akbar. Honorable uh, uh, Mavileta. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Minister and Deputy Minister, thank you for the, for the report. And really, this is a job well done. It, even if when you report, you could feel that we come a long way. And I mean, to end up with 276 recommendation, it's a lot. And I was happy when I hear that you have divided them into 16 themes. And also that gave me comfort is that you also develop a dashboard to track you know, all the actions that you'll be doing. And for us uh, uh, politicians, if we'd like to come and see, we can just go there to the dashboard and to see how far you are. And already 69 will be finalized soon. And on that, the, the thing that, the other, that worried me is on that color coded um, uh, actions where you, you said they are further further investigation are expected to be done. So for me, I'm saying that can also delay, you know, a good job that you are doing and the process, because if you are also still going to do further investigations, it might take long. And really, uh, this is a progress report. I really will wait for the recommendation and expect everything to be implemented thoroughly. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening to, to everyone. Um, good to see you, Mr. Zatole, in a, a different role from the one I used to see you in. Now you're in the hot seat, um, and, and, and all strength to your arm in a very difficult job. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, the quest, first question is regards the publication of the un, unlisted investments. Uh, Mr. Tolly, you'll recall in about 2016, um, the breakthrough that we made in getting that list of unlisted uh, investments published. Um, and, and it, it really was a, a, a giant step forward. The last published list, as I understand it, it goes back to 2018, despite a commitment that that list of unlisted investments would be made public on a regular basis. The question is, why is that not happening? Um, and is it... Is there, are there no plans to do it on a regular basis? For instance, let's put it on the website quarterly or every six months, um, as I think was the original intention. Then, Mr. Chairman, in terms of the, the interlinked investments of AO, um, independent media, second jail law, I understood that there was 
that the PIC was going to um, obtain a preservation order um, of assets. Did that not happen? Because if it hasn't happened, I, I'm afraid I have no faith in any of that money ever being recovered. Um, so first of all, the question is, was such a preservation order um, attempted? And if it was, um, what was the outcome? If not, why not? And then in the view of the PIC, what are the chances of any recovery um, from that group um, and, and, and the extent of any such recovery? Um, it, the, in terms of the VBS uh, amount, uh, the, the, the situation there is dire, as we all know. Again, what is the amount that should be recovered there and what does the PIC believe is actually recoverable? Mr. Chairman, the, the, uh, the question of Steinhoff is an interesting one. I mean, Steinhoff um, was and remains the biggest corporate fraud in the history of South Africa. And, and it grinds along very slowly with the main protagonist, um, I understand, not yet even charged on, for any misdemeanor malfeasance crime. Um, but it's interesting that the actual loan was, or the funds were not given directly to Steinhoff. Who were they given to? Who, who, who came along to the PIC and said, we need X billion, and you can tell us how much it is, please. Um, and, and, and presumably the PIC had some sort of claim over the, the, where that money was then invested. And so therefore, as the minister says, it's kind of like a linked claim, Steinhoff and this other third party or the the primary borrower, as it were. Who is that primary borrower, and what what security was there on on those funds? Um, yeah, the the question of political connectedness, uh, Minister, is is a vital one in all this, and um, and I'm glad that it's 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 recognised uh, as such. So, Mr. Chairman, may I leave it at that? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Honorable Liz. Um, Shoni, show us concern. Uh, no, yeah, Togoza, Slalo, Togoza, Kluoma Bala. And uh, greetings to the Minister, the Deputy Minister, Honorable Members, the team from Treasury, and the PIC as led by uh, its chairperson. Indeed, we 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 appreciate uh, the report uh, which has been presented to us uh, which is the report from party commission uh, chair well i'm not i was not following uh, slides uh, because i joined the meeting a little bit late uh, because of the sitting of the national assembly uh, but then uh, well i did uh, browse through the main report and in that report it would seem that in many instances, uh, uh, according to the commission, it would, it would seem like that the commission has found that the PIC, in many instances, it has sound policies, processes, and frameworks. However, in many instances, these were not adhered to deliberately bypassed and or manipulated to achieve certain outcomes. Uh, and also legislations, mandates, and standard operating procedures were repeatedly violated. So when I look at that, it would seem that uh, our challenge it's not about uh, policies, legislation, procedures, 
uh, and stuff like that. But it's, it's more about uh, the people. It's more about uh, individuals who don't want to adhere to those particular procedures, who don't want to implement the policies, the good policies that are there. People don't want to adhere to the legislation. So I think it would have been easier if I think the main problem was the shortcomings in terms of the legislation that is there, in terms of the policies that, that, were the, that, that are there, the operational procedures and stuff, we would easily say, let's uh, change these particular policies, let's change this one, let's do this. But it, 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 it would seem that uh, these things in the main, they are there, but the problem, they are being violated deliberately, and some repeatedly so, in order to achieve certain outcomes. So, well, I've heard that uh, there are quite a number of recommendations that have been put in place. And uh, as uh, I think Mr. Stolle was presenting, that uh, I think uh, there's a certain percentage that so far they've been able to address them. Others are still outstanding. Others, they would need other structures uh, that have to also come to party and assist. Uh, I think there are about 276 recommendations. So, my question is that uh, is there a hope? of turning this institution around, taking into account that there are so many challenges and, and so many recommendations that have been put in place. Uh, is there hope that uh, indeed uh, 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 the PIC, with the assistance of other structures, including the law enforcement agents, will be able to, to turn the situation uh, 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 around? Because these challenges, I think they are so deep, uh, 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 deeply, they are so deeply rooted uh, within the, 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 the institution. Uh, secondly, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, uh, my question, the second question would be, what are the exact recommendations in relation to directors and other employees uh, of the PIC that benefited and truly from their positions of trust uh, uh, that they were holding, uh, what are the exact recommendations to deal with uh, 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 such individuals? And the last question, uh, I would like to know, as Mr. Stoller indicated, that uh, other recommendation would need law enforcement agencies like the NPA to come in. Uh, I, I would like to know if there's any update as to how far are the processes of those law enforcement agencies in terms of the matters that they've been referred uh, to them. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Sir Togoz, I'm Tony Jos Kosan. Uh, Honorable Shibamba, over to you. My name is Chairperson. So after the presentation by the PICC or the minister came in to speak about politicians and public representatives that are involved in PIC dealings, I would have wished that you should point in the report of the deals that are influenced by politicians. Who are these politicians which got to influence the deals in the PIC. Maybe that is a question that you must respond to in terms of uh, what happens, because there seem to be a deliberate thing of bastardizing politicians everywhere that if you are a political leader, you're automatically corrupt. If you're a political leader, you can't be trusted and all of those things. And that is why part of the recommendations of the PIC report is that the uh, deputy minister must not be chairperson of the PIC board. And this is against a legislation which we passed as both houses of parliament to say that the board of directors of the PIC must be chaired by the deputy minister. We have passed that legislation it is in the president's desk now and he must sign it. And I, I want to propose concretely, Chair, 
that the, as the committee we must take a resolution that the president of the republic must sign that bill into an act of parliament unless if there are constitutional issues that he has against that bill that uh, has been passed. It, the PIC is a very important institution and, and it should be aligned to what are broadly a government's perspectives and even its accountability to parliament should be through uh, the elected representatives. So if you can entrust someone to be in, in the executive, I'm sure that that person can preside over the PS. I'm going to raise issues later on. In terms of the current uh, dynamics uh, of what is happening, and then the question that I want to ask is, what is the PIC's exposure to NASPAS currently, in nominal terms? Just how much money have you invested in NASPAS? When we visited the PIC and the GPF, when uh, the currency was still in the GPF, I think the value was almost 250 billion rand worth of investments. We're raising this issue and isolating it because it's dangerous for the PIC to have such exposure in one corporation because you cannot outrule the fact that what happened to Steno can happen to NASPAS, leading to the eradication of the value of investments. Like it will be, it will be more than 200 billion rands that will be lost if what happened to Steinhoff happens to NASPAS. And, and, and this therefore speaks to the investment policy of the PIC that just where do you invest the money and what is the quantum that you put in each and, of, in each and every of the companies that are invested in? I think that that must be then dealt with in terms of uh, the issues. And then in terms of the current uh, uh, acting board or, or interim board, I want to, to know what is the quantitative value of investments that have been done since we were appointed as a board in terms of uh, what happens. And then the other question that I want to ask is, what is the value of assets that are externally managed by other asset managers? We all of us know as a matter of fact that outside of directly managing the assets of the GPF, UIF, Compensation Fund, and all these other smaller funds, the PIC subcontracts asset management, just how much assets are externally managed. And of the assets that are externally managed, which belong to Black-owned asset management companies, are managed by Black asset management companies because the transformation imperative must not be missed in terms of the PIC's role in driving transformation and inclusion of Black people into mainstream economic participation. I don't think that there must be any apology in terms of uh, what happens. But also I asked the question when the PIC came to parliament of what is the current uh, or previous board members involvement with the PIC? As the chairperson of the PIC ever asked for a loan from the PIC, does he have an existing loan? Do any members of the board, the chairperson of the investment committee, all the people who are here today, have they ever asked for a loan from uh, the uh, PIC? Or do they have existing loans? Or are they asking for loans from the PIC so that we can then be able to, to determine certain things? And I'm asking this chair in context there because there's a document which I think the chair must specifically respond to of him being part of a Lion Pride the consortium, which includes a Mpo Makwana, it includes uh, Devon Gavenda, it includes Yvonne Minga, it includes Geoffrey Rothschild, which is a request to purchase the 25% of SA home loans, which the minister was complaining about that that was a raw deal. If it is false, that proposal by the chair, we will clarify it. So we do not want to gossip about things that the uh, otherwise can be clarified in terms of concrete information. 
that can be brought here. Another issue that I want the, the board to respond to is in percentage terms, I know like the listed component of the PIC is far much larger than the unlisted component. But in terms of performance, which components performs better? Like, like can you give an illustration of what are the returns in terms of uh, the listed component and the unlisted uh, component we can then be able to deal with? It's not true, Minister, that the issue of staying off and the PIC's participation was only through Jayendra Naidu and Lancaster. The PIC had direct exposure to Steno. And when Steno collapsed, it, it lost possibly like the, the, the time it collapsed, the, the reports that we got in parliament was, was an equivalent of 20 billion rand. So outside of the loan which was given to Lancaster and, and reportedly was uh, insured through Citibank, the PIC lost an equivalent of 20 billion through its own direct investment. So don't understate the significance of uh, what the PIC got to lose, the stain of collapse and, 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 and everything else. Then. And I agree with the, in, an earlier intervention that can be given a clearer and much more believable illustration of how is the PIC going to recover the lost value in stain of due to wrongdoing of, of the establishment. So those are the questions, Chair, that we must then deal with. But one thing which I think we should not weave around is the issue of uh, the bill which after lengthy deliberations and public inputs, we passed uh, by more than two thirds in parliament, in the fifth parliament, and is currently on the desk of the a president and must be signed into law so that we can constitute a full-time board of the PSC because this board is always told to be interim and, and throughout it was said to be interim because we are awaiting the finalization of the commission that uh, we are discussing today. So now that the commission has been completed and the parliament has received the reports, I don't think that there is any political shifts that will necessitate us to withdraw the bill which already has been passed by parliament. It must be signed into law so that it can take effect immediately. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thanks. Uh, Honorable Abram. Uh, uh, Jefferson? Are you not raising your hand? Yes, I am, Chair. Yeah, I am, because... Chair. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm locked on on my phone. That's why I'm taking time to, to, to come in. Forgive me for not uh, putting on the video. Um, first and foremost, Chair, I was surprised today to discover that the minister doesn't know that I'm his whip. I, it, it means I'm not cruel enough for him to remember me. I'll, 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 I'll take note of that when the year begins. Um, <laughs> and um, Chairman, my, on a serious note, uh, my first uh, take really is on the um, transgressions and that are law and regulations which are is is, is the presentation says 23 percent now the question is how did this happen when there were internal risk assessment structures and what has been done in this section in detail uh, i see chair that there has now been a split in terms of the controls internal controls can we can we get a detail of that and um, also, I just want to add to what some of the members have said in terms of what has been done with the, with the, with the, with the human element of the trans transgressions. <laughs> Secondly, Chair, uh, has it been uncovered why when emails were circulated about the CEO and CFO, that the PIC did not act and instead were satisfied with the explanation of the CEO, since part of the work now must be about the lessons of how 
a systemic change as outlined is achieved. <coughs> and my third and second last chair, um, does the pie chart and flow charts actually tell us that there has been a change of culture? It was said meetings did take place. That alone does not change culture. So can we get some a, a detail on how um, culture has actually been changed. Lastly, shame. Uh, forty-five percent of performing investments is not really high. Forty-five percent. It's not really high. What does this tell us about the supposed uh, informed decisions on investment choices? Thank you, Chen. Uh, thanks, uh, honorable members. Um, let me ask you uh, two or three questions. Uh, Minister and Chairperson, uh, the President appoints a, a judge to head a commission. It investigates, makes findings, and makes recommendations. And then uh, PIC appoints another retired judge to lead a panel of uh, advisors. Looking at the composition of the board and the management of the PIC, it has got more than 100 years of experience. Uh, if you look at the qualifications that board members have, uh, management, what is it that is not there in the board and in the management that you need a retired judge to advise you? Well, can you make a case, a rationale, looking at the composition of the board that you have presented today with your corporate governance experience? Then you take a judge to be an advisory panel leader. Why? And how much are you spending on that uh, advisory uh, panel? Uh, you, you have to respond to that. Last time when we met on the 15th of October, 2019, you remember we met in Cape Town and uh, it was in the presence of the Auditor General's office. Uh, there were serious uh, audit issues that were raised uh, including the deterioration of uh, the audit performance of uh, the PIC. And uh, we wanted you to respond as to what are you doing in that regard to make sure that uh, the audit performance of uh, PIC uh, improves. And the other question that was asked on the 15th of October last year was the legal foundation of uh, writing off investments. This was one of the uh, questions that was uh, asked by the Auditor General as to why do you intend or why have you written off uh, certain debts to businesses that uh, continue to operate. So over to you, Minister, uh, Chairperson uh, of the board, Deputy Minister and officials. Uh, those are the questions coming from uh, honorable members. So you can respond to, to them. Uh, honorable Chair, uh, I can I think I will deal with the many other political questions, uh, but may I hand over to the chair to deal with the, just the technical issues uh, that have been, which, is, which have arisen out of this conversation. I'll deal with the political questions and there are many of them. But uh, uh, chair, I did not hear uh, Honorable He Lewis saying anything. Is he, is he quiet or did you suppress him? But whatever the case might be. Honorable Lewis, Minister, is not in attendance. Uh, he was here. He was here earlier. 
Uh, I didn't see him. As far as I know, uh, he has sent an apology that uh, there will be an alternate. That's why Mr. Alf uh, Lees is here. Mr. Oh, Mr. Lee is not a member of this committee. Yeah, but he was here earlier early on before you arrived. But anyway, let's 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 leave that. Perhaps Let you me... frightened him away, Mr. Minister. He what? Perhaps you frightened him away. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I apologize for that. But let me hand over to Dr. Koza to deal with the technical issues, to deal with the political issues. Uh, if I, we can do it like that, because time is of the essence now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Can I be heard? We can hear you, but pull the screen a little bit higher so that we can see the, not just the head, yeah. A little bit, yeah, yeah, you're, you're okay now, yeah, thank you. Okay, no, th so thank you very much, uh, Minister. We'll try to deal with the questions as they were raised and we will uh, address them uh, as a team, except for the question that was uh, directed at me directly by uh, Honorable Shubambu. Uh, when you get to that, I will um, uh, respond to the question as raised. Uh, Honorable Murolong um, was concerned about um, the instability that may arise from our not having the CFO um, back at, at the ranch and the perception that uh, you know, something might actually be amiss where that is concerned. Um, yes, we do um, agree that uh, in fact, we need to deal with that situation and we are dealing with it. And given that it is in the arena of uh, 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 human resources, uh, the human resources uh, committee, I will ask uh, the chairperson of HRRC to actually address that. Um, Honorable Morolong also raised a question about um, Steinhoff and the potential loss um, that uh, may actually eventuate given uh, the slowness of uh, you know, pursuing that particular case and whether or not we could actually uh, deal with um, the directors, you know, current and past, to actually um, recover the monies as well as to stop the, the, the hemorrhage. I want to believe that um, um, we will be able to answer that, but I'll ask uh, the uh, point persons within uh, PIC who actually deal with that, in particular uh, those in the legal unit. And the um, additional question I think from um, uh, Honorable Morolong had to do with uh, the latest downgrade. Uh, where that is concerned, perhaps Minister, you might like to lead the charge, but we'll be able to give you the requisite um, uh, support. Um, Advocate Makubalo Ndaba, can I ask you to address uh, the issue of uh, the suspended uh, CFO and how we are in fact <laughs> dealing with it? Um, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, uh, the issue of the suspended uh, CFO uh, is a matter that is also of great concern to the board. However, it's important that we have to inform the committee that the CFO was suspended on a disciplinary case, which she actually won. And simultaneously, there were other investigations relating to other matters uh, that she had to answer to, and also to matters that actually came out of the judgment party uh, uh, commission. So in its wisdom, uh, the board felt that um, her, her suspension should actually continue while she is attending to the disciplinary processes. Uh, however, in, in the last board meeting, the board has requested the chief executive officer to look into the matter of the CFO uh, as to what is it that can be done in order that we can get closure on the matter, given the fact that it has taken uh, <coughs> far too long for us to finalize the matter. 
So I would imagine that in the next board meeting, the, the chief executive officer will put a proposal before the board uh, for the board to consider what is it that has to be done in order that we get closure uh, on the matter. Thank you, uh, 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 Chairperson. Uh, Chair, let me talk to the issue of staying off just in broad terms, because one of the questions that came uh, from Honorable Morolong was that there was a perception that uh, uh, the issue of staying off was being treated uh, much more uh, with kid gloves than it is supposed to be. Um, uh, we must uh, report to this, uh, to this august committee that um, as the board, we, of course, we've been hearing uh, the concerns of various publics who have been direct with us uh, as to what is it that we are doing to deal with the issues of staying off. And the board has gone out of its way also to seek uh, audience with the prosecuting authorities, which is the NPA, uh, meeting, of course, with the head of the NPA. And we've also gone off, out of our way to meet with the DPCI, uh, colloquially known as Hawks, in order to get an understanding as to what is it that is really happening. And I can inform the committee that from the perspective of the board, we are satisfied with explanations that have been given by both the NPA and the DPCI in as much as everyone else in South Africa who's concerned about the stay in matter, who are also concerned because it's quite a, a large panther uh, that is involved here. From a process point of view, uh, we have uh, been in touch uh, with, the, with the authorities and we are, we are confident that sooner or later uh, there will be action taken on the issue. Thank you, Chair. Well, th thank you very much, uh, Advocate and Daba. Um, the Steinhoff um, uh, challenge is, uh, is, is quite a complex one. And I would like, uh, you know, one or two more people to actually help us reflect on this. Perhaps starting with um, uh, Temba Gamedze to, to comment uh, briefly on um, uh, why there appears to be sluggishness uh, occasion, as it were, by the complexity of the matter. And then I would like our executive uh, team, uh, perhaps led by the CEO, but uh, perhaps um, uh, also delegating to the um, legal department to bring us uh, uh, quite up to, up to speed. It, it, it's, it's, a, it, 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 it's, a, it's a huge challenge, it's complex, and uh, it, it, it actually uh, demands uh, urgent attention. And we have not been idle in pursuit of um, that particular case. Uh, Mr. Gamedze. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I obviously don't want to go on and on on this issue, but I'll just give an indication of, of, of why Steinhoff has caused um, quite a lot of uh, energy to be, uh, to be, to be expended. Uh, the, one of the big things about Steinhoff is that the fraud as such um, will have occurred some, at some point in time over the last few years. And, uh, but finding out exactly where the fraud was committed, um, which, under which jurisdiction uh, is, has proven a challenge. So Steinhoff has a headquarters in, 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 uh, in South Africa, uh, but it is listed um, on the, on the uh, Frankfurt Stock Exchange and its head, it, its actual, um, where it's actually domiciled is, is in the Netherlands. So whenever you, we were finding out that we have to make sure that every case that is brought is brought to the right authority, otherwise one gets passed from pillar to post. So that's the first thing is actually making sure who's got the jurisdiction. Um, there have been some uh, some responses, uh, for example, the FCA has, has uh, I think, uh, fined um, the, 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 the arch, the, the alleged arch perpetrator, um, quite a lot of money. Um, but the Steinhoff issue does require uh, coordination in multiple jurisdictions. And this is slow um, because obviously the people who you are uh, engaging with may not have as high a priority as we do, but it will be done. Um, justice will be served. Um, so I think that's that's very important. The issue is being pursued 
but it is much more sophisticated and complex um, than, than perhaps might, might be first um, uh, thought to be the case. Um, I think I'll leave it there, um, uh, if that's fine, Chair. Thank you very much, Temba. Uh, we might appear to be perhaps a little over exhaustive in addressing this issue, but it, 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 it's a very, very important issue. And I would like for the executives, perhaps through you, uh, Abel, to tell us the, some of the practical steps that have been taken in terms of uh, you know, securing uh, part of that which was lost as a result of this uh, debacle and how far we have gone in making common costs with those that might actually be equally aggrieved or uh, similarly. Yeah, but, but Chair, I, 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 Minister here, I, I want us to move towards a close. It's been a long day. Can we move towards a, can people be very brief like Temba, he was very brief. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair and uh, uh, Chairman of, of the committee, and of course, Honourable Committee members. What I'm going to do is, 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 is try and meet the Minister's uh, injunction that we proceed uh, speedily. I'm, I'm going to deal with uh, the Steinhoff matter and then proceed to quickly address uh, all the other questions as briefly as I can. Uh, just to, 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 in a sense, wrap up, I think all matters of a legal nature have, have the challenge of being subjudicated. So we, we, quite, we need to be careful about how we address them uh, because we might find ourselves in a difficult uh, situation. So there are a number of issues that we need to be concerned with Steinhoff. Uh, advocate, um, not advocate, Honorable Shibambo was correct. Um, the, the losses that we, well, not losses, but depreciation in the asset values that we, 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 we have um, incurred uh, are in the tune of 20 billion uh, in Steinhoff and we're pursuing all of them. And the way we're doing it is uh, my reference to the PwC report is to establish if we can identify parties that we can pursue uh, in a court of law, because there is one thing to, to make assumptions about allegations of who might have been responsible. It's one issue to actually take them to uh, a court where they'll have to answer, and that you need something to give you. And that's why we, in a sense, asking for the PwC report to see if there's uh, any indication of some people that we can pursue uh, in, in, in that matter. And then the last point I want to make about Lancaster is, is to confirm what the minister said. Uh, we did fund um, uh, a, a BE uh, uh, group uh, in the uh, uh, person of, uh, of uh, Lancaster, uh, and there are two transactions. One is, 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 is a loan that, uh, that we provided of about 9 billion. Uh, the actual value is close to 13 billion. Um, uh, and that, 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 I think, is, is the, is the, is the um, reference that the minister made to the funding that we provided to, to somebody else. Uh, so, so all those are matters that we currently are pursuing, both in terms of the uh, uh, depreciation in the um, direct investments and in the loans that we provided to, to parties. Uh, and then Honorable Murolong also asked, asked about the, 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 the impact of the downgrade on the portfolio. Um, we, the, the one that impacted the portfolio substantially was the one in March, the first downgrade, uh, which coincided with COVID. Um, it, it impacted the, the portfolio to the tune of about 223 billion rand. The good news is that we have uh, substantially recovered most of that. Of course, COVID's impact is something that we still have to, to, to contend with going forward. Uh, the latest one has had major impact. I think it was, in a sense, as we say in the markets, was priced in into the asset value. So we haven't seen any significant um, movement in asset prices because of that. Uh, that completes, I think, the questions that uh, Honorable Morolong um, uh, uh, asked. And then the next questions were from uh, 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 Honorable uh, uh, Vessels. Uh, and most of it was around um, distressed uh, assets, um, the extent thereof and, 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 and what we're doing. I just need to, to make it very clear that we do not write off any assets. I think it has come across a number of times. We impair assets. Uh, what we do is to try and put a realistic value on the asset, but we don't stop to pursue those assets. If, 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 if it is money that we, we, we are owed by uh, people that we have uh, provided loans to, we don't stop pursuing. We don't write it off. We try to pursue um, those uh, until we are able to recover to the extent that we are able to recover or an entity goes into liquidation. And of course, we are one of the participants in the liquidation process. So we do not really um, uh, um, write off. Um, the, the distressed assets are, are not all, as I've indicated, 
due to uh, malfeasance. Some of it is, is, is genuine, honest decisions which were taken and the conditions changed uh, and didn't, didn't perform so well. And two around performances are indicated um, uh, in, in, in the broader asset management of the PIC, over 60% of those assets are, are actually performing very, very well, not to the same degree, I think 45% better than the, the, the 22%, but when we, we combine them, they're performing very well. There was a question that says, is unlisted investment perf performing better than the, the, the other assets? The answer is, uh, as, as, as of now, the, the, the larger portfolio in the listed space is performing better than the unlisted. But of course, when we invest in unlisted, yes, we, we do seek a return. There's no doubt about that because that's, that's what our clients expect from us, but our clients also expect social returns. So we make these investments in, in, in other areas where we want to achieve other objectives like job creation or provision of uh, 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 health facilities or education facilities or infrastructure. So, so the return is not only just the return around the financial return, it's also um, the social return that we are, we, are, we, we are getting from those investments. So they might not necessarily be matching the listed, but they do provide other broader uh, uh, um, uh, returns. Uh, and then there was a question on, on, on the fees. Uh, we, we, we do have a comprehensive list of uh, fees that was requested by the party commission report we presented to SCOPA. Uh, and I think I don't see any reason why we can't share with SCOF as well. So that, that, that is available. Um, uh, it, 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 is, it is not going to be possible to recover most of it because most of it actually was paid uh, based on a contract. So to recover it, you, you, you have to have costs for you to actually be able to recover. But we are pursuing where um, these questionable uh, payments that have been made or claims to payments, for instance, as we spoke in the case of SA Home Loan, uh, where we actually pursue those matters where that is, 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 is the case. Um, and then the last question that um, uh, Honorable Vessels asked is around uh, what are we doing in terms of consequences where um, uh, either there's been malfeasance uh, or there's been uh, underachievement. Of course, underachievement is dealt with under normal circumstances and procedures of, of, of the organization where there is underperformance. First, you, you, you try to establish what, what, what is the cause, uh, if, the, if there's a need for, for retraining or for guiding that is provided. Uh, if there is uh, cases of malfeasance, those uh, involve uh, 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 action that is taken in terms of um, uh, the legal processes um, or the normal disciplinary process of the organization. And then uh, people then face the consequences in terms of a disciplinary code or in terms of uh, legal action that's taken against them. Uh, and then the last one was the review of the mandate. Uh, uh, that actually has proceeded quite substantially. Uh, the, 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 the beginning of that was to review the investment uh, policies um, statement that was uh, has already been finalized. Uh, it's done mostly by the it's driven mostly by the client, uh, the GPF, uh, using uh, uh, expertise that they've um, secured. Uh, that has led to the review of the mandate. We we we, we, were, we, have, we have made significant progress. I think we should be finished by the first quarter of next year in terms of the total mandate review uh, and the implementation thereof. Um, uh, there might be some changes because I understand that they're currently reviewing the strategic asset allocation, which, which will then uh, impact on 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 the uh, on the mandate. And then there was the issue around transparency around the mandate. Uh, by and large, the mandate belongs to the clients. We are simply a recipient of that. So I think that's probably uh, a question that the, the GPF is probably better placed to answer because they are the custodian of that mandate. But some of the reasons why it will not be in the public domain because it contains uh, terms and, and conditions uh, that are specific to how we engage with uh, particular investments or making investments that, that are competitive issues uh, that they might not be comfortable with the competition being aware of. So I think a generic response to that is that in the mandate, there are competitive aspects of the mandate that uh, the, the client might not be comfortable to make um, uh, public. The next one was um, uh, uh, questions by uh, Honorable Mavileta. Um, uh, uh, the one involved uh, further investigations. Um, the, the commission has been very specific about instances where we need to, 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 to really um, investigate. I, I won't go into detail, but so what we do is we look at uh, where the, the, the commission has specifically enjoined uh, the PIC to conduct investigations, either um, uh, with regard to the, act, 
the actions of specific officials of the PIC or uh, with regard to specific investments. For instance, uh, the, 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 the decision making uh, that led to investment in IO and, and the information that the organization received to make the investment uh, needs to be investigated. So, so there are those investigations that need to be to take place. Um, uh, and then we move on to uh, uh, Honorable uh, Lise. Uh, the publication of the unlisted uh, actually, that actually has, has continued. So I think maybe the problem is not the fact that it is not public, it may be how you access it. Uh, so the GPF did provide the unlisted in 2019, and they've provided again now in 2020 after they finalized the annual report. So, so I know that last year it was provided as an annexure uh, because you had the annual report and then you had the annexure. So if you went to the annual report, you, you, you got the normal reporting where it is 10, the top 10 um, uh, investments and such. But the whole list of uh, both listed and unlisted is provided in, the, in, 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 a, in a separate annexure. So it is probably a, an issue of how you access the information on the website, but the information is definitely public and can be accessed on the website of the PI and the GPF. Um, then there was the question around um, uh, 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 the preservation of funds. I think this was a reference to specifically to IO, uh, to, 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 to ensuring that uh, while we are uh, going, we are uh, working on processes to, 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 to recover to the extent that we are able to recover the 4.3 billion that was invested in IO, uh, we have to make sure that at least when we, when, if we succeed to, for, for the court to grant us um, uh, access to that, that it is, the money is there. Um, we, we, we have um, instituted action to try and preserve, but the requirements in law to force uh, that kind of preservation is quite onerous. So it's course, you, you, the fact that you, you're asking for it still has to be sanctioned by a court. Uh, to date, we haven't really uh, been granted that but we're still pursuing um, and, and keeping an eye on how those assets in, in IO are being treated by the organization. Uh, Steinhoff, uh, I indicated already that we, 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 the reason why we seek the PwC report is because we want to, to see if we can identify specific individuals that can be held culpable for um, the depreciation in the assets uh, that has lost that to the challenges that we're facing uh, from an asset, um, um, uh, manage, asset based perspective. Uh, the next uh, questions were asked by Honorable Skosana. Uh, I hope I dealt with all the. Um, oh, VBS. Uh, the, there was a question about VBS, uh, the amounts uh, um, in VBS. Uh, Ryan gave me the numbers. Um, the total that uh, we have in, in VBS is 400. Is 475. 475 million. So that, that, that's, that's the, 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 the amounts that are involved in the case of VBS. And then. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Abel. Abel. Yes. Uh, could, I, could I also uh, ask you to address? Uh, there was the question also about us uh, pursuing the chief culprit. Um, are we doing anything about that? Where, where Steinhoff is concerned, I, be, I believe um, it's, it's to do with former, you know, chief executive. That's correct, Chair. That, that, that's, that's, that's the reason why we're looking for the PW report, because it, 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 if there's anything, it's likely to be, we don't know for a fact because we haven't seen the report. So the reason why we're seeking to have access to the PW report is to be able to identify all the individuals, including the former CEO, if there is any indication for us to be able to pursue uh, um, uh, um, uh, them. Then the uh, uh, um, uh, Honorable Lies also asked a question about around, which, which is an exchange control, that the, the sense that Steinhoff is, is, is moving its assets offshore. Uh, we've done, we've in, in, interfaced with the Reserve Bank and, and none of uh, that actually at this point in time, um, any money that involves the PIC is um, are involved in the money that are being moved. But just to, to remind the committee that uh, Steinhoff actually is, is an international listed company. So, so, so most of the assets would already be uh, legally outside of, of South Africa. So, but the, the, the current reports do not in any way impact on the, on, on the PIC. 
Uh, then I'll go to Honorable Scorsana. There were a number of questions. Um, the, the issues around um, the, 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 the challenge of a PIC turnaround, uh, the fact that it, it's such a gargantuan task. Um, I, I would like to, 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 to allay your fears that somehow the, the, the 308 odd recommendations uh, in, are going to cripple the organization. As I've indicated, uh, significant progress has been made in addressing those matters. And we created a systemic way of actually addressing them. Uh, some will be more challenging than, than others and take longer simply because of the complexity and the fact that, of course, it will invo involve other people who also have rights that they will make sure they will try to protect. So they might be protected. But we, we, we are quite um, honestly aiming to address the bulk of the really um, uh, matters in, within 12 months. Really, that's, that's the kind of contract that we have with the board to, to, to ensure that those that we can address within the 12 months will address. And of course, the challenging ones where there are, there are investigations and legal processes that we can't predict how long they're going to take. Uh, but I would like to assure you, uh, you indicated that you came late. So when I started the presentation, I addressed that matter to say, we, we must always uh, recognize that the, the report um, and the challenges that the PIC has faced actually um, applies to a very small portion of the PIC, uh, less than 4%. Uh, the bulk of the PIC is actually operating very well, uh, meeting clients' um, uh, return expectations. Uh, and that's why clients, by and large, have continued to support us. So the, 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 the operations of the PIC are actually firing pretty much on all four cylinders. Uh, it, 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 well, actually, it, it, it's more like a V8. Um, it, 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 it is the, the, the address that are very significant because they involve about 70 billion, but they, they must not be misconstrued to mean that the whole of the PIC is impacted by those. So we need to understand that in context. So I would like to, 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 to allay your fears to say that the PIC is alive and very well. But of course, we do need to address the challenges of culture um, that have led to some of the allegations that we, and, and the recommendations that we're currently dealing with. And then there was a question around uh, what are we do, doing with the recommendations that involve staff and directors? Um, uh, the, the, the directors that are implicated or cited in the party commission report are no longer at the PIC. Um, and, and, and it's actually just one director that, that um, uh, specific um, recommendation has been made to, in a sense, do further investigations around flows of money and assets. So it's just one director. Staff, there are, of course, staff members that have already left the PIC to the extent that they, they, they are implicated and investigations are done that um, uh, uh, lead to uh, possible uh, action that requires uh, legal action that will be pursued um, uh, with those employees. With regards to staff that are still within the PIC, uh, most um, disciplinaries have taken place and the appropriate sanctions have already been um, uh, uh, applied to, to those staff. So again, that's where uh, for most of their staff, um, those actions have already been taken. Uh, with regard to the involvement of the uh, uh, work of the NPA and DPCI, that involves, for instance, uh, taking statements from our staff, uh, affidavits, uh, so that they can actually follow up matters and ready them for court where they are ready to do so. But as the chairman has indicated, um, there is commitment and, and, and it is, it's, it, 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 from both uh, entities to, to ensure that where there is uh, action that must be taken of a uh, legal prosecut prosecutorial or um, uh, uh, criminal nature that will be pursued. So they are fully on board to help the PIC to achieve those objectives. The next one was uh, Honorable uh, Shivambu. Uh, he asked a specific question about um, uh, the PIC's exposure to NASCARs. I think, Mr. Shvam, do you are correct. We do have a significant exposure to, to NASCARs. At this point in time, it stands at 229 billion rand. Your, your concern about concentration, concentration risk is uh, it, 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 it is right, it's proper, it is correct. So it is a concern that we as an organization have a very similar um, uh, concern about our exposure to this uh, particular asset. Uh, and it is, it is quite a significant asset. 
I do need to add, though, that you must remember that the reason why NASPERS is so big is because it has grown so big. So we actually have benefited from its growth. So yes, we are exposed to it, but we are exposed to it because it has done so well for the portfolio. So we mustn't forget that when we look at NASPERS that part of the reason is that it has performed so well relative to the total market in South Africa. So that's the one. The second part is that NASPERS is a big portion of the total uh, listed uh, equity market in South Africa. And we are simply a participant in that. The only answer to that basically is, 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 is to find alternative uh, uh, avenues for diversification. And, and the broad ones, of course, are uh, if the PIC is able to execute in the unlisted space to, to invest more because that is uh, investing in the direct economy, or the other one is to actually start looking at offshore exposure uh, to, to secure both the client's assets and, of course, the country's exposure to a possible uh, depreciation in the assets, which then, of course, leads to the client wanting to go to the shareholder to, to, to guarantee the benefit that is guaranteed in the pension fund. So addressing the NASPERS exposure is, is a great concern for, for both the client, the GPF, and the PIC. But I just want to, again, highlight that the reason why it's like that is because it has grown so well for the benefit of the GPF and, 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 and those who are invested in it um, across the market. It's also an indication of the concentration in total of the, of the listed market in South Africa. And that's why diversification is so important. And then there was a question around the, the, the new investments made by the board. Um, um, I think the board has been very cautious, dealing mostly with, 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 with the challenges that have been identified in the party commission report and making sure we're strengthening our processes and procedure. Uh, in, while we're doing that, we have tried not to expose ourselves before we are comfortable that our processes and procedure uh, can stand up to scrutiny. However, we have made up to 1.3 billion uh, uh, in the unlisted in, 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 in investments in the, in, in the period um, that has uh, gone by. Uh, there was then a question about uh, how much are we um, allocating to external uh, black asset managers? Uh, the amount that we're allocating to external black, black managers is over 150 billion. Now, you, you might say, why so small relative to the uh, uh, 2.1 trillion? The reason is that, of course, most of our assets are, are managed um, are in a particular way that's informed by the liabilities of the client. And that, in a sense, um, uh, in, uh, enjoins us to, to follow a particular investment strategy, which will not be served by diversifying even more to external um, uh, asset managers. And as we've seen with the unlisted, we don't necessarily get better performance from our external managers. But of course, the PIC is committed to support um, uh, 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 black asset managers and the creation of um, uh, uh, black asset managers. And that's why proportionally, the PIC is the biggest supporter of uh, black asset managers in South Africa. I think we probably support between 40% and 60% of the asset under management of individual black asset managers. So we are already a significant player Although it's 150 billion, we are a big, big, big supporter of uh, black uh, asset managers. Uh, I won't touch the question of the chair, although I, 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 I could, but the chair seems to want to answer it himself. But I, 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 it might be better for me to protect him because I do know some of uh, the response to that. Um, no, no, that's the impairments. No, no. Uh, Chief, come to us and end, please. Oh, okay. So, so, so I've, I've dealt with that. So I'm going to let the chair, maybe if you want to deal with the loan that he's supposed to have received for Lion Pride, which I can say categorically, we, the PIC has not been approached by the chairman for any loan. So I can, I can state that categorically, but if you want to respond to it himself, that's for him to respond. But I can state categorically that the PIC has not received any request from the chair chairman of the board of the PIC for any loan to participate in any transaction. Uh, then, then there was a question. Could I just add uh, to that? I think uh, you have answered that more than adequately, um, Abel. Uh, do uh, people who will sit on the board or have they um, 
actually borrowed from uh, the PIC. Uh, Honorable Shibambu, uh, some five years ago, when uh, Prime Media was up for sale, I was part of a consortium that approached the PIC uh, for funding five years ago. And um, uh, we were brushed aside with gusto and we learned our lesson then. Chair, I think um, that's from the can, can, we, can we get a much more comprehensive response of all the board members' exposure to the PIC, previous and current loan applications, so that we know who stands where? Yeah, but let, let, let's deal with the party commission, please. Uh, uh, Minister, we, we, we have no challenge. I think we, we, we can't. No, no, no. Uh, uh, CEO, please deal with the party commission. Forget about Floyd's uh, um, left wing rhetoric, please. Uh, 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 chair, on a point of order, Chair. Honorable Shibamba and the Minister, uh, this meeting is chaired by me. Uh, so you take platforms without being recognized. I don't know why. You yeah, but the that. minister must learn to, to, to respect members of parliament. Okay. Not, Can we allow... to to now. Okay. Uh, I'm also a member of parliament, by the way. Yeah, Honourable, but you must respect us. Honorable Shibambu and Honorable Minister, can we allow Mr. Stolle to finish uh, responding to questions? If there are uh, follow up questions, uh, I will open up for uh, members to ask follow-up questions. Let us allow Mr. Stoller to finish uh, responding to all the questions. Uh, uh, Mr. Stoller, you can proceed. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, then the question was around performance, um, the, the, the performance of the unlisted. Uh, I, I think we, we have struggled a bit. I think it's uh, Brian, 1.87% is, is the performance. And as I've indicated, at this point in time, the performance of the unlisted is actually less than the performance of the listed. So, so that's where we are. Uh, and then um, I'll move on to uh, Honorable uh, Abrams. Uh, she asked about um, um, what has been done with regard to the transgressions. Uh, for staff that are within, within the PIC, I've already shared that uh, we're action uh, disciplinaries have, have uh, uh, we required. We've taken those, um, and the appropriate sanctions applied. Um, some of it, of course, is about simply making sure people are uh, are made to understand the policies, the processes, uh, to understand their tasks and roles. And in some instances, of course, there is further action that's taken that requires even other. Uh, 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 and there's more coming in terms of uh, some of the investigations that will, will, will be will, will be uh, followed. Uh, and then there was a question around how we have strengthened uh, decision making um, uh, or, um, uh, with regard to management and the structure. Uh, as the uh, uh, chairman uh, alluded to at the beginning, um, the, the separation of duties to ensure the segregation of roles. Uh, for instance, um, the, the CEO no longer performing the role of CIO, uh, a chief operating officer um, having been reinstated. Uh, we 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 currently looking for the CIO. The, the, the chief risk officer is has has, has been appointed. Um, the chief technology officer is, is currently being recruited. So so that will ensure that power is devolved in the organization and it's not centralized uh, on any particular role within the organization. And then there was a question about the change in the emails. I think this uh, commission found that. Um, I think you it was my understanding is the reference to the Nugu and Noku emails. Um, number one, the, the commission found that there was no basis for most of those emails, um, and simply required the, the PICs to strengthen uh, its um, access policies to ensure that we can control of that, and that already has been done. Actually, what well, that was done even before uh, the commission made the recommendation. Um, and then the performance of the of, of the of the forty five percent. I've already given that, so uh, I think that should be sufficient. Uh, and then how we change the culture? Um, of course, a, a culture is 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 is, is, is not, it's not an event. You don't change the culture by event. It, it, it requires management to to behave uh, differently. Uh, it requires management to engage with staff differently. Uh, it requires management to, 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 to and, and the organization as a whole to, 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 to engage differently with our clients, with our stakeholders, with the public. So, and, and all those are matters that we, 
we are paying attention to. I cannot point to uh, a, a single point and say that's an indicator of, of, of culture, but I can really affirm that a lot is being done, especially given the challenges of COVID and having to deal with um, each other remotely through this kind of uh, instruments where it's difficult to engage with people. But I, I can assure you, honorable um, community member, that we, we, we are making progress to change the culture, to, 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 to speak to what the chair spoke to, uh, instilling the appropriate ethical culture, uh, making sure that people apply themselves to their work, they apply their competence, uh, and they don't cut corners, they, that we adhere, uh, we comply. I think that's, that's basically uh, what we are focusing on. And then, Chairman, you, you, you asked a number of questions. Uh, why a, an advisory panel? Um, both the Chairman and uh, Advocate Ndaba emphasized, and I tried to kind of, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a sense, dwell on this matter again. The, the, the advisory panel is not there to do the work of the board. It is there just to ensure that the public can take comfort that what the PIC, its management, um, through its committees and the board say they've done, somebody can, who is independent can attest to that. So it's, it's almost like providing an assurance mechanism independent of the PIC to say, you need to be able to assure the public that what the recommendations, um, 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 how the recommendations have, have, have been addressed, they have been addressed properly and completely to the extent that they satisfy uh, the intentions of uh, the party commission. Because of course, the recommendations themselves are not gospel truth or not, not, not the judgment of court. They, they do have room for uh, consideration and a, a appropriate response. But that, in a sense, has to be still meet a certain standard. And I think that's what the AP was established to do. So that's the first one. The second part of it, of course, is that there are certain aspects of the recommendations, as I've indicated, Chairman, that involve the PIC or its, its officials. Uh, and it will be difficult for the officials to deal with themselves without having an independent body. Uh, and I think the, the board saw to it that they, they create that ability to have, um, to give reliance that uh, when the board acts where itself is concerned or the officials act where they, they themselves are, are concerned, an in independent body can attest to the actions that are taken. So that I think but largely are the two matters that I would like to kind of highlight as to why the, the the, the um, uh, advisory panel was established. Um, you asked a question about the cost. Uh, the budget is, is, is about 10 million as, as we speak, uh, Chairman. And then on the edit issues that were raised by the Auditor General, uh, those were serious and they found themselves, of course, in, in, into the, uh, into the uh, annual financial state themselves. So the, those comments were there. Um, I, I would like to report to, 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 to you and the committee that there's been a significant improvement in the latest report, uh, which I'm sure you will, you, will, you will want to call us at some stage to come and, 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 and present to you. Uh, when, when we come to present, we'll deal with that uh, in detail. But the good news is that um, there's been significant uh, improvement to the extent that uh, there's just been a few matters uh, findings rather than to any matters of um, um, adverse findings. So there's not been any adverse finding this year. Uh, the, the not so good news is that the, although the, the, the report are totally not qualified, we still have these findings. And our commitment is to work to making sure that we have a qualified report without findings. And the shareholder, of course, is disappointed because the shareholder had enjoined on us to ensure that we don't have findings. But unfortunately, we worked hard, but we still have a couple of findings which we will be addressing uh, uh, in the new year. Uh, and most of it really is, is, is historical issues. It's, it's matters that go back years, uh, 2014, 2015, that we're still working through. Um, but again, it, they are what they are, and we need to address them. So that, that, that was that. Uh, and then you spoke about uh, the legal foundations of writing off. No, we do not write off assets. We impair and we pursue um, whoever owes us money. So we do not write off. We, and we employ until such time that there's a liquidation and then there's nothing we can do. But we do not write off at all. I hope that satisfies all the questions that were asked. Um, um, I just want to correct something that I, I, I was asked about what investments I think came out of um, Honorable Shibamba, but the investments that we've made um, uh, proved in, 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 in the last year. Um, I, mean, 
I said 1.3 billion. Actually, I just looked in the annual uh, financial report, in the statements uh, on page 20 and page 21. Um, actually, a lot more uh, significant amounts have been approved, um, and they are much higher than what I indicated. Chair. So I just wanted to correct that so that I don't leave committee members with the wrong impression. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Stoll. Uh, honorable members, we have uh, scheduled this meeting for three hours. That is uh, from six until uh, nine. Uh, if you look at your clock, it is exactly one minute to nine. I'm not sure if members still have uh, clarity, I mean, uh, follow up questions. Uh, if not, uh, so that we can adjourn the, the, the meeting and uh, agree on the way forward. Um, I don't see any hand from my side. Alan, you can assist. Um, yeah. So far, there's no hand uh, on my side. I don't know how to. I don't on, know. Abraham. My, my, I don't know how to put my hand up here. I don't know. Something has disappeared here, Honorable Minister. Uh, okay. On a chair. Uh, can I say something very quickly? Because I'm, I'm very exhausted. Okay. Miss London, there will be two follow-up questions. I don't know whether the chair of the board wanted to say something after the CEO, and then I can say something, and then we, you say something, and we, we, we go home. Oh, so thank you, Minister, um, and thanks for the opportunity to come and present to SCOF. I don't uh, have much to add. I just need to thank my colleagues for obliging when we were requested to come and present and for supporting the chief executive in uh, leading the charge in responding to the questions that uh, members of SCOF um, had to raise. Um, there are a few political questions that um, you indicated you're going to respond to, and we will be delighted to have you actually handle that. Thank you very much, uh, Chair of SCOF, and thanks, Minister. Okay. Um, maybe before, Minister, you respond, let me uh, get the two members wants to ask uh, follow-up questions, uh, then you respond, then I summarize the, uh, the, the, the engagement. Uh, Honorable Shbambu and Honorable Abram. Oh, over to you, Honorable Shbambu. No, follow-up question. No, thanks, Chair. The, the, the specific question that we want to ask the Chair, he says he has not applied to the PIC to purchase a twenty-five percent of SA home loan, but did he apply or did he constitute a consortium to want to buy twenty-five percent of SA home loans, which is partly owned by the PIC? That is a specific question that we were asking, and that that has not come out clear in terms of uh, what happens. And in the in the previous meeting in the engagements. Part of the questions that we had asked was the disclosure of the sitting board members of the PIC, their previous and current exposure to the PIC in terms of loans and interest and or, or consortiums that could have been part of. The chairperson spoke about the prime media deal, which he said the, it was set aside. Can we get a, a declaration of all other board members? What has been their exposure to the PIC? in terms of what they've applied, so that we, uh, we know what we're dealing with uh, moving forward. Those are the concrete questions that I, I want uh, responded to. Okay. Honorable Chairman, uh, could, I, could I respond to that? Not yet. There is still another member who wants to ask questions. Honorable Abraham. Hi, hey, Jeff. Move. Yes. Okay, so no, no. Um, mine was just the process issue. I wanted to agree with you that uh, 
maybe we should end here and now, but that the conversation should continue because I think the, the size of the work of the party commission is not worth the three hours that we gave ourselves. And so for me, um, part of the way forward should be a conversation that continues beyond today. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks. Uh, Chairperson, you want to respond to the questions from Monel Bushbamb and then uh, uh, I hand over to the minister from there. I summarize and close. Over to you, Dr. Kos. Uh, can you unmute Dr. Kos? Dr. Kos, you, you are muted. Alan, can you assist in unmuting him? Chairman, Chairman, you are on mute. Chairman, you are on mute. Alan, uh, can, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you yes. start from where you, you, you started? We didn't hear what you were saying, uh, Dr. Kos. Okay, no, thank you very much. Um, as a matter of uh, good corporate governance practice, all directors of any company, any organization, actually declare their um, interest in various uh, in, in investments that they may be having, as well as their directorships elsewhere. And all of us actually did make that. And those who um, imagine that they might be a lot more deeply uh, conflicted actually went in, in, in great length to explain the nature of the conflict. So that, I mean, whenever uh, the issues pertaining to that were discussed, we can recuse them you know, well in advance. But at every board meeting, you got to confirm what it is that you have declared as uh, your investments and interests. And in addition to that, also indicate if there's any matter that is going to be discussed as um, uh, circulated uh, for, for the meeting, uh, you are likely to be conflicted and you get recused accordingly. So that, that's a matter of, of, of standard practice. And the lists of um, interests that the various uh, directors have are available for everybody to actually scrutinize including uh, members of parliament uh, like Honorable Shibambu. That is not the question I asked, Chair. Oh, oh, no, no, Honorable Shibambu. I, I asked I, if he has no. put an offer through Lion Pride to purchase SA home loans. That question was responded to by the chief executive. No, okay. Uh, Minister, over to you. It's, uh, it's very late in the day, uh, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> just to ensure that the, the report of this committee uh, meeting does not uh, endorse the two resolutions proposed by members, the first one was by Honorable Vessels. Uh, we should not adopt the resolution that he proposed. The second resolution was proposed by uh, Honorable Shibambu. That as well must not be adopted by this committee. I oppose it. So those are the two resolutions which were being proposed, which if we don't attend to them, they might enter into the minutes of this committee as resolutions of this conversation. So I suggest that we do not adopt those resolutions. Then I make the following few points uh, as I retire from the meeting. The first one, and it's a very serious point, is that the PIC policy 
on extending uh, loans to people must have a strong collateral guarantee clause. And I think at the AGM of the PIC, we discussed this. So I think the, the board of the PIC is going to take over this and deal with it because you can't just go to the PIC and, and arrive there there's nothing like that. You go there for a loan, there must be a very strong uh, collateral uh, uh, a guarantee uh, agreement so that if you don't repay the loan, we then have recourse through the courts to access the collateral. That's number one. Number two, if uh, I could ask the um, the CEO or whoever was uh, putting the screen, uh, the, the, the document on the screen, to put that screen that had uh, the listed and unlisted um, uh, entities, so that I can make my point. Uh, uh, Mrs. Tolle, can you put that back? So I can make my point. Oh, Alan, Alan, can you put the, the slides back and put go to page three? Page three? Yeah, that one. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I think this is part of the public relations nightmare that we have. You see the uh, Honorable Emma Swangai, that you see the listed portfolio, you can see it over there. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It goes up to seven there on the left, exposures and the total and percentage. Then it goes to the unlisted portfolio, which is uh, like Africa, X, SA, equity unlisted, property unlisted, local unlisted, Isivaya uh, fund. So you look on the right, and then it says, 2.34% unlisted property, 3.71% unlisted easy buyer, and 93% of course is listed portfolio. Now, if you look into the actual um, nominal amounts of the 2.34 and the 3.7, it's not as small as it looks because this is into billions. And then you go down you look at the unlisted easy buyer as at June 2020, performing 45%, underperforming 8.6%, watch list 13%, distress 32.8%. Now, you see, the, if you combine the under, from underperforming through to distress, that's a huge amount. It's more than 45%, actually, of the performing. Uh, so underperforming and uh, uh, distress, the distress is 32% and then underperforming is 22%. That's greater than the performing uh, number. So if you are an investment manager and looking at this, you should be extremely concerned. Now, <clears throat> what this doesn't show, and this is a conversation uh, uh, honorable chair that I have to have with the uh, PIC board of directors is that in the underperforming and the distressed, that's where most of the malfeasance is taking place. Where people say a PIC gave me money and they go and spend it and then so on and buy Mercedes Benz and so on. And then it gets distressed. And then uh, it can't be just uh, written off or uh, impaired, you must get into that and find out what is the collateral component of it that we must look at. That's very important chart, which I hope honorable member, members will, will uh, uh, get into. As far as, the, it's fine, say, you can remove it. Um, and then there's the issue about the politically exposed persons. It's a very important point that we must deal with that includes EFF members exposed through VBIS um, uh, in this matter, and they mustn't run away on a, from. On a point of order, on a point of order, responsibility chair. for they must take on a point responsibility of order, on a point of order, for their role 
in VBS and chair. deal with the matters. Okay. No, just okay. no, just, 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 no, my shut up, minister. Just wait, wait. But man. but you must respect me, Tito. Can I finish? Oh, no, 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 no. But you must respect no, me, Tito. Can I finish? Oh, no, 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 no. Tito. Can I finish? You must talk. Yeah, but you must don't 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 undermine me. Can I finish? Can I finish? Yeah, no, no, but no, can, no, I, can no. I can I put a point of order? Can I finish? Can I put okay. can I put a point of order? Can I finish, please? Oh, no. Hello. Can I finish? Can I call a point of order? Okay. Le Honorable Minister, let's allow him to bring a point of order, and then we take it from there. Okay, bring a Chair point of order. Chairperson, there's not yes. a single report, there's not a single report anywhere, in any way which implicates any EFF member or any EFF member of parliament. No way. And he has been repeating this thing several times because he has got nothing to say. When we expose his weaknesses and misdirection, he always refers to that. And that is absolute rubbish. You must stop doing that, Tito. It's unacceptable. Honorable Shbambu, in raising a point of order, let's use a parliamentary language. Not, let's not use the rubbish. And let's address the other member, because Honorable Mbowen is a member of parliament as Honorable Mbowen. But he keeps on saying Floyd, Floyd as well. Why can't he say Honorable Shbambu himself? He, he will address you as Honorable Shbambu as much as you should address him as Honorable Mbowen and not use the uh, unparliamentary language uh, rubbish. We, 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 I think we, we, we acknowledge the issue that you are raising, but uh, let's stick to the rules of uh, parliament. Uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you very much. And Honorable Shivamo should also know how to address people who are older than him. Uh, just to give respect to the older people. Okay. So the, but the respect is and uh, my man. It's not it's not just demanded like that. You must end respect. Oh honorable Shbam, can we not have a, a dialogue between yourself and the, the minister? Can you allow the minister to wrap up so that we can uh, 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 adjourn the meeting? Thanks. Honorable yeah. Minister, can you proceed? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to address the issue of the recommendation from the commission about the chair of the PIC board of directors. Uh, it is very clear what the, the commission has recommended and I support that view, that the chair of the commission must be uh, not a political person uh, in order to improve the governance process uh, in the institution. And the current arrangement actually has been a guinea uh, pig arrangement to see whether uh, 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 the chair of the board of directors of the PIC being uh, not the deputy minister has worked or not. And it's very clear to me that it has worked very well. And as we implement the recommendations from the Commission of Inquiry, uh, will take that into being. The, um, the next issue is about, and I, I, it's about Sekunjalo and Ayo. Uh, I think that uh, uh, maybe this committee should invite the, the chairperson of Ayo and Sekunjalo and also uh, uh, the previous CEO of the uh, PIC to have a conversation on how those arrangements were made and, and so on. But I think it would be very wrong for us to tarnish the image of the whole IO organization or the whole Second Jalo organization uh, based on this. I think it would be unfair um, uh, on the organization and the uh, business that they're involved in, I think we should invite them for a conversation and let's find out exactly what is the view from their side. But that which is due to the PIC as a dividend from the investment must come to the PIC. But I think we must be very careful about saying things which might end up destroying uh, uh, somebody's businesses uh, in the process. And I agree that uh, the board of directors of the uh, uh, PIC has put in place a process 
uh, which has uh, requested Judge Muhoro, retired Judge Muhoro, to go through these many uh, recommendations and provide a professional uh, advice on the way forward. I think that's the way uh, to go. And I think finally, uh, I am the view that uh, the malfeasance that happened uh, in VBIS, which involves some of the uh, EFF people, the, no matter how much they deny it, uh, must not dis detract from the fact that the VBIS, VBS model was actually a good model in, in, in uh, 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 advancing uh, uh, banking to the most rural people in South Africa. The problem was that it was invaded by the wrong people uh, as the uh, inquiry uh, uh, called the, the Great Bank Heist uh, report said. But I think the model was a good model, uh, extending credit to our people in the most distant and rural areas. And it's a model which personally, I'm going to fight to try and make sure that it returns in one way or the other, not the malfeasance, but the model. I think it was a good model for people. You only need to travel in the most uh, north or northeastern parts of South Africa to see what the VBS was doing there. Very good work. And, uh, but unfortunately, the bank fell into wrong hands. So Chair, um, having said all of this and uh, thanking you very much for affording us this opportunity to appear before you, uh, with due respect, uh, I think uh, maybe it's time to retire. Uh, for the night, but thank you very much for your patience and for calling us to order and uh, uh, putting us uh, in, in a good place. And that uh, when young people want to debate with old people next time, whether they're wearing red overalls or wearing shirts and so on, they should uh, maybe go and do it somewhere else. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Chair, on a point of order, Okay, point of order. Chair, the minister is not a member of the committee. We have made proposals here as members of the committee. It's only committee members that can deal with the, whether we oppose the motion that we have put on the table. And we've put a motion about the signing of the PIC amendment bill. And, and there's not been opposition from members of parliament. So, so, so his objection is his opinion. It, it, it means nothing. So we can't have... Can invite people into our meeting and then they want to enter. Okay. Uh, thanks very much, uh, honorable members of uh, parliament, the minister, deputy minister, uh, PIC, the board led by the chairperson and other board members present, management led by the CEO, officials of treasury, officials of parliament. Um, we'll schedule another meeting in the first quarter of next year, uh, because today I believe that uh, we're getting a presentation on how the PIC, uh, I mean, the party commission report will be implemented. We'll have a formal meeting where we deal with certain issues which will need uh, us to take uh, resolutions. We have noted issues that uh, members have raised, uh, including those raised by Honorable Vessels, Honorable Shbambu, uh, Honorable Murolong, Mabile Etzalis, and Skosana, and uh, Abram, uh, and process them properly in our meeting and uh, take resolutions in a proper uh, manner. So there's nothing that is being rejected, but also we are not taking any resolution uh, as of now. Uh, we'll meet again next year. Uh, we acknowledge uh, the pie chart that has been uh, developed uh, by the PIC 
to implement uh, the recommendations of the uh, party uh, uh, commission of inquiry and uh, will be following very closely uh, minister as you have said that uh, you are going to table uh, a memorandum in cabinet uh, so we believe that by the time we meet again next year uh, you will come with the resolution of uh, cabinet in or the decision of cabinet in regard to the memorandum that you will have tabled uh, there. Uh, last week, we met with uh, SARS and National Treasure uh, to get a briefing on the New Gen Commission uh, 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 report and uh, the manner in which they are going to implement those recommendations. Uh, National Treasure and SARS have developed like what PIC has done uh, timelines on how the new gen commission recommendations uh, will be implemented. Um, so we acknowledge that also with uh, the PIC. So that will assist us uh, to use as an instrument uh, when we play oversight on SARS and the PIC that uh, this is what uh, you have committed yourself to in regard to implementing the resolutions. And then uh, you will have to explain if uh, you don't implement the resolutions as uh, committed. So I hope you will uh, fine tune the timelines so that uh, 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 we don't come again uh, later and said, but this is what you said you are going to do. And why are you not doing that? Because that will be used as a, a performance uh, uh, stick. Uh, so we believe that uh, you will fine tune uh, the timelines and all those recommendations that uh, you have clustered in the pie chart that uh, you have uh, uh, flighted on the, on the screen. Um, we'll continue to play oversight on the PIC. Uh, as the committee, we are concerned about the performance of many SOEs uh, because as this committee, we deal with the fiscal framework and uh, the reports that we get from Treasury uh, indicate that the majority of SOEs uh, are not performing to their expectation. Uh, PIC is one of the biggest SOEs uh, in the country. Uh, if it collapses, like we are witnessing with other SOEs, which uh, it might be difficult to, uh, uh, for them to rise again. Um, <clears throat> surely it will have a very serious impact on the economy of the country. Uh, and so we have allocated this much time uh, to discuss uh, this report. It's a very, very critical uh, SOE. We are not saying others are not uh, but this is quite very, very important SOE uh, to can uh, fail. And uh, we believe uh, what you have committed yourself to, that uh, you will make sure that uh, all recommendations are uh, implemented. Uh, we are going to schedule a meeting early next year in the first quarter, uh, because we still have to receive the annual report with uh, the audited uh, financial uh, statement. Um, uh, so uh, the secretariat will communicate with the CEO as to when will be uh, that uh, meeting. Uh, I believe by then also as a committee, we'll have met to uh, process all the issues that uh, members uh, have recommended here. The secretariat was uh, recording all the recommendations in regard as to uh, what needs to be done uh, on which uh, recommendations. Uh, as I've said, uh, today it will be difficult just to pick up the issues raised by vessels there, by Liz, uh, by Abram, and one by one. Uh, I don't think the Secretariat have done that so far. Uh, but we are not putting aside what uh, members have raised. Uh, will process them at the, at the right time. Uh, 
So thanks very much, uh, honorable members, uh, minister, the board, and uh, your team. Uh, this was a very important uh, meeting. I chai seni ita bonanam duku a parliament. Inko. Iso neche. You can see ni vele as as a supermarket. Uh, Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. you, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. you, Thank you, you, Thank you. you. Thank you. everyone. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Mas não